BillyCBoxing.com network of programming. And here's your hosts, Billy C and Brooklyn Mike. And we're coming at you from the Billy C studio in Lake George, New York. I'm Bill Calagero, and joining me this morning, like he always does, my man Brooklyn Mike. Good morning, Mikey. Good morning, Billy. <laughs> How are you, buddy? Uh, I was just, uh, you know, the Brooklyn Mike. You know, the Brooklyn wasn't coming off my, my, my lips the way they should have, you know what I mean? I know how you are with names, so I, I, I forgive you. <laughs> yours, <laughs> yours is easy. What are you talking about? I know. You stumbled on it. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. Well, hey, hey, you might as well kick off the show the right way, you know. But a uh, lot of stuff to talk about. Um, first and foremost, uh, just so everybody knows, we're going to uh, talk some sports. We're going to talk some baseball, football, breaking down the AFC. Uh, but as we head into the uh, NFL season, preseason is over, so uh, we're looking forward to all of that. So let's get it going right now, Mikey. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to touch on it a little. I'm, I'm not that big of a men's tennis uh, fan. I, I when I do watch it, I got to admit, I I do enjoy watching women's tennis for various reasons. I actually, I think it's way more entertaining. But uh, um, first and foremost. Uh, uh, Roderick, he, 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 Roderick, I should say. I, there I go, murdering his name. There you too. go. <laughs> uh, announces his retirement the other day. He's thirty years old. Uh, what's your thoughts, real quick? Um, well, Andy, in my opinion, was an underachiever. Um, you know, he won one Grand Slam tournament throughout his career, which was uh, two thousand three. He won the U.S. Open. Um, he was a fan favorite, especially in uh, at the U.S. Open. Um, you know, he says he's retiring because of injuries and basically poor results at, at the uh, Grand Slam tournaments. Um, I mean, what do you say? He, he was a, an OK player, not a great player. He had his moments. Um, I, I kind of think of Andy Roddick when I look back as the poor man's Jimmy Connors. Um, everybody know how, how uh, Jimmy was uh, revered at, uh, at the U.S. Open and throughout the world. And I think Andy was hoping when he started his career to be the next, you know, Jimmy Connors, that that U.S. that uh, United States uh, champion with the, the enthusiasm and and, uh, but he just didn't have the talent, obviously, that Jimmy did. And um, you know, listen, I, I, you can't you can't be that bad. Thirty years old, he's got a beautiful uh, beautiful wife. He's retiring. He's got money in the bank. You know, I, I wish him the best. Um, like I said, I just think uh, he was. He underachieved, um, 
you know, throughout his career. But he does have that one win, and no one could take that away from him. Do you think that uh, this is a retirement for good, or is it like some other sports where, you know, they announce, uh, announce a retirement, and uh, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, a year later, they're, they're feeling good. They, they, you know, they think they can compete, and they come back. I mean, 30 years old is, for today's athlete, is, is still kind of young. No, it is young, um, and I and I understand uh, you know what you're saying about you know coming back. They they miss the fanfare, they miss the excitement. Um, like I said, he, he one of the reasons he mentioned for retiring was injuries. So I mean, who knows? I mean, uh, you know, let's say a year goes by, he's 31, he's 32, and you know he's feeling strong. But uh, the bottom line is, he still had poor results, especially at at these Grand Slam tournaments. Um, he hardly ever made it to like you know quarterfinals, semifinals, especially in the recent years. So I, you know what? I, I kind of think even if he feels good, I kind of think Andy's going to stay away. Um, that's just my opinion. He, you know, he could prove me wrong, but I, I think it's uh, you know he's moved on. I'm sure he's thought about this quite a bit, and um, you know, I just, you wish him the best of luck. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll do pretty well in the uh, in the broadcast booth. He'll have a nice career there. You know, he's still alive. <laughs> he's still alive for for uh, this year's Open. Uh, he's uh, that's Correct. the whole that's the whole funny thing about it. You know, could you imagine? I mean, in, in professional sports, in my opinion, the best way to go out, the best way to go out, is as a champion. You know, and, and could you imagine a guy that's you know? And in boxing, uh, they say if you're talking about retiring after your next fight, you you've already retired mentally. You know. And and I like to kind of compare it to other sports as well. And you say to yourself, well, you know, maybe, you know, for all the reasons you just gave, maybe, maybe this guy's already mentally retired and here he is. He's he's still alive. How, how great could it be for a guy like him to actually win and uh, and then go through with his retirement? Uh, that would be great. I mean, uh, you know, like you said, he's still in, he's still in it. He just, uh, you know, he beat Bernard uh, Tomic uh, a straight set uh, victory on Friday to uh, reach the third round so uh, i mean yeah i mean now that he's already announced his retirement uh, people are gonna be pushing for him even more especially the u.s open is is basically his home it's the only place he's won uh a, a, um, a grand slam tournament so uh, yeah i mean that would be uh you know uh, quite the story you know kind of like elway going out winning the super bowl um would that change? Would that uh, you know affect his uh, decision for next year? I I don't think so. Uh, I I think nothing could be better for Andy if he did go out a champion. I just I don't see it. It would have to take uh, you know all the stars being aligned uh, for it to happen, in my opinion. But uh, you know, like I, I said, uh, I wish him the best. I uh, I did enjoy watching him, especially at the uh, at the Open. But uh, you know, he was uh, to me just just a little bit of an underachiever. Obviously, uh, Brooklyn Mike, a big fan of uh, Andy. <laughs> you know, one of his fa one of his favorite all time tennis players. I'm uh, trying to be nice. No, <laughs> you know, trying to be nice. Hey, we're, we're going to talk about the uh, NFL a little bit later on the show, and and uh, one of the things I wanted to touch on was the uh, uh, officials and, and and their fight right now with the NFL. But you know, before we uh, abandon uh, the other sports category, real quick in hockey. Uh, the NHL and the uh, National Hockey League Players Association have still not uh, come to an agreement. I know that they were supposed to have talks late last night. Um, I, I didn't get any updates on that. What's your thoughts on that? You know, I, quickly, what I was my my train of thought is is simply this. You know, when the NFL has an issue, and you have these holdouts and stuff, similar to what we're going to be talking about later, and and then when the players held out. I mean, the NFL's got some juice, man. You know, I mean, there's no question about it. And, and you know, when, when you hear about threatening uh, of holding out or a season not happening, you know, as a fan, you know, you, you kind of get a little nervous. But with hockey, maybe because I, I honestly am not the biggest hockey fan. I follow it. I, I watch, you know, my Islanders since the 80s get beat regularly. You know, and, and uh, you know, I just don't see them being as powerful and I wonder why they're dragging it on. Like, you know, what's your thoughts on that? Is it something that's going to be resolved before the season or, or what? Uh, you know what? I don't know if it's going to be resolved for the season. I, I, I have my doubts that it will be. Um, you know, you compared it. You said, you know, how the NFL has a lot of juice. Well, the NFL is, is it's the sport 
in, in America and, and out, of, out of the four major sports, um, football, baseball, basketball, and hockey, it's the least, uh, you know, um, watched in, in, in the United States. Um, it, it, they're going to have a tough time. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's, it basically comes down to, uh, to money issues. Um, you know, they're, they're actually saying that Gary, why does Gary Bettman make the, who's the, uh, uh, president of NHL, why does he make $8 million a, a year while, uh, these guys are working for much, much less and entertaining the crowd. <laughs> they actually brought that into it. Um, you know what? Let me ask you this. If hockey wasn't on during the winter, would you lose sleep? Me personally, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely not. I mean, you know, that you know, it's hard for me to even, you know, fathom a strike uh, in in hockey, but you know, a lot of a lot of uh there are a lot of fans, uh, especially where where we're broadcasting from right now on on WMML. Uh uh, you know, I know there's a lot. There's a hockey town. I, I know that there's, there's a lot of hockey fans and, and, and the ca- Canadian uh, uh, f- fans and listeners and viewers and stuff. They they all love the sport. I'm not knocking it at all, but I, I'm like you. You know, I, you know, out of the four major sports, I mean, it, it, I hate to say it, and I don't want to lose our hockey uh, listeners, but it's definitely my least. You know, and 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 I think the numbers back it up. You know, I mean, I mean, I thought uh, for an example, Mikey. I thought it would, it's totally ridiculous that we have hockey teams in the state of Florida. You know, I mean, right? You know, uh, okay. You know, Buffalo, New York. You know, you know, obviously uh, Montreal and and Edmonton and all the cold places where they actually get ice. You know, and and these kids, uh, uh, that's their choice. You know, they grow up and and their option is hockey because everything's frozen. They live on the you know the frozen tundra, so to speak, and uh, that's what they play. So I, I'm not going to knock them for that. But a kid growing up in Florida. You know, unless he's going to a big arena, you know, they, they, ice, you know, I mean, that's what you put in your drink, you know. I mean, uh, you're, right. you're, you're, you're in North Carolina now. I mean, you guys might get uh, below freezing a couple of times a year, but ice, you know, I mean, come on. No, no, I, I agree. And like, like you said, it is the least, <coughs> excuse me, watched uh, sport in the United States. However, I will say this about hockey. Um, in person, for me, if you go to a game – it's the most enjoyable game to watch. You're in right. Person, you are a hun- you you are a hundred percent right, and and I feel the same way. I, for years, for years, I never went to a hockey game, and I would watch. You know, the Islanders uh, during their heyday, I would watch them on TV and stuff, and I always had this illusion that you know the 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 rink was so big, and you know they they seem that when when the TV camera is is following that puck, it seems like they're skating for an hour and a half. I, I pictured it, you know, like like the size of a football field. And then my very first hockey game happened to have been a a playoff game between the Islanders and the Devils. I was amazed at how small it was, yes. and yep. and how how I could follow it so much easier live than you can on television. And uh, subsequently, I, I had uh, gone to a lot of games uh, in, the, in the Glens Falls uh, Civic Center. We had uh, uh, several teams there, and we still do. And uh, it's exciting. You're, so you're right. To go out and, and have some fun at a live event, there's no question. I don't understand the rules. <laughs> you know, I have not. It's, it's, it's a game that I just can't pick up the rules no matter what. You know, I mean, I had an easier time learning how to play craps than I learned uh, how to follow the rules of hockey, man. It's tough. Yeah, well, actually, I probably know hockey rules better than I know craps, to be honest <laughs> craps with you. Craps is tough. <laughs> but I also will say this about hockey. Um, if I had to choose one game seven to watch in baseball, in in uh, in basketball, or in hockey, there is no doubt I'm picking a hockey game seven because that is just constant excitement sitting on the edge of your seat entertainment because you never know what's going to happen you watch a baseball game pitcher gets the ball he looks at his signs he throws the ball there's always that 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 uh, lull in 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 time um same thing with basketball guy scores a basket they dribble down they set up the shot okay there's a lull in the action hockey game seven there is no lull in the action that is that is just a tremendous tremendous sport to watch as far as a game seven goes that being said on the whole because it is a long season on the whole that's why it's just not as entertaining um to this to the uh, average sports fan but i guarantee you you get an, a person who really doesn't watch the sport 
religiously, and you put them in, and you watch any Game 7. doesn't have to be your favorite team. doesn't have to be the Rangers or the Penguins. Any Game 7 is exciting. Okay, no. any Game 7. Um, but, again, like I said, on the whole, it's just the least – attractive to the united states and that's that's where the problem lies and you know uh there, there could possibly quite possibly the, the chances are higher there being a lockout this year yeah well we'll have to wait and see so uh hopefully uh they'll get it going and a great segue you know because uh uh a lot of times people say you know i i, I went to a, a fight the other night and a hockey game broke out and I, I got a little boxing news i wanted to talk about related to new york um they just announced last night that uh, Miguel Cotto, now it was rumored that Miguel Cotto was going to fight uh, Floyd uh, Mayweather in New York um, because, uh, uh, you know, Fitty Scent, Fitty, you know, and guys like us that know him, you know, we call him Fitty. You know, Fitty Scent was, uh, became a promoter in his first uh, state that he became licensed in was the state of New York. And uh, rumor had it that he was going to fight uh, Miguel Cotto December 1st at Madison Square Garden. Miguel Cotto's a big uh, draw at Madison Square Garden because of the Puerto Rican fans and everything else. Well, it was announced last night that Miguel Cotto was fighting December 1st at Madison Square Garden, but it's not going to be against Floyd Mayweather. It's going to be against Austin Trout for his uh, world uh, junior middleweight title. Um, what's your thoughts uh, on Miguel Cotto con continuing his career and his fight against Austin Trout? And keep in mind... Miguel Cotto said at the beginning of uh, this year that uh, this was it for him. He he didn't plan on uh, really fighting anymore, and at this stage of the game, it looks like he's going strong. Um, listen, I've always been a Miguel, a Miguel Cotto fan. Uh, I've actually seen him uh, fight live a couple times uh, when he fought Paulie Malnounchi. I remember that. I was there for that. Uh, I like him a lot. I think he's been an ambassador uh, for the sport uh, as well as a great champion. Uh, you never hear any problems coming out of, uh, you know, his end of the woods. And, uh, you know, I've always liked him. Um, I, I think it's going to be a tough fight for him. You know, Trout is an undefeated uh, fighter at 25-0. and 0. He's younger. Um, I, I believe he's probably going to be stronger at this weight. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a tough challenge for him. I'm wish I hope he wins. I hope he wins. Um, I, I'm I'm glad. I don't. I really don't want to see another Mayweather Cotto fight. To be honest with you, because I, I just think the result is going to be the same thing. Um, you know, after a while in that fight, you, you know that uh, you know he wasn't going to beat Floyd, and Floyd's uh, you know ring generalship was taking over, and his his you know standing back and pot shotting, and uh, you know. That was. It's going to be the same thing, I believe. Um, if they did fight again, uh, it, it's great for Miguel. You know, he's going. He's going out, and he's going out in, in the place that uh, he's loved the most: New York City, Madison Square Garden. And uh, you know, you got to wish him the best. Uh, I know the, another reason I, I like him is because you know, when Miguel Cotto started fighting. He didn't know a word of English, not a word. And he learned the language. He learned it well. And then now all his interviews, he prefers to be. You know, to to speak the English language, and he, you know, he did that for a variety of reasons, and one to be, you know, um, to be more well known to the the American uh, boxing fan. Um, I, I think he's a. Uh, I've always liked him. I, there's nothing bad I can say about Miguel, Miguel Cotto. I wish him the best. I think it's going to be a tough fight on on December first, um, but we'll see. We'll see. It, uh, whatever it is, it'll be an entertaining fight because that's one thing Miguel Cotto gives you is 110 percent every time he steps into that ring. This is true, and uh, you know I, I agree with you with the Mayweather fight. I, I I always when people talk to me about that when uh, Mayweather and Cotto fought, I said you know the thing about that fight it was a very entertaining one sided fight. The only person Correct. that really thought that Miguel Cotto won that fight was Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto went back to Puerto Rico very pissed off and uh, felt that uh, he was robbed and everything else. And it was kind of opening the doors uh, uh, for a rematch and, and uh, uh, because of the uh, juice that uh, Miguel has at, at Madison Square Garden, it looked like it could have been uh, a possibility. But uh, now uh, it's been announced, the Austin Trout fight, um, which means another thing, because Miguel Cotto was a hot topic. Not only was he being discussed as a possible opponent for uh, Floyd uh, Mayweather, but also Manny Pacquiao, which now kind of leans uh, towards Manny Pacquiao fighting Juan Manuel Marquez for a numero cuatro. That's right, the fourth time uh, on December 8th in Mexico City. Uh, all three of those fights have been uh, extremely close, controversial endings. Some people think that uh, Juan Manuel Marquez won all three. Um, I think it's a mistake for uh, Pacquiao to 
to fight him right now. Uh, I know we, we're not going to really talk a lot about boxing, but I, I think that fight doesn't lose its shelf life. I, I think that that fight could always take place uh, as their fourth fight. And law of averages say Manny Pacquiao, you know, he comes out with an L in this fight. It could very well be his last fight. What, what's your quick thoughts on that? Yeah, it very well could be. And uh, the the possibility of that happening is, uh, is, is a great possibility because, as you said, all three fights have been so close. Um, that being said, to be honest with you, I'd rather not see a fourth fight because I could – we can pretty much tell you, you know, tell you what the outcome is going to be. It's going to be close. It's going to be probably controversial again. It's going to be a split decision again. It's it's just, um, you know, it, it, there comes a point in time where you say, "Been there, done that." Now I look at those three fights, and then I look at the fights like uh, Arturo Gatti and Mickey Ward had, and you know, as like I said, Pacquiao and Marquez were, were very entertaining, but they weren't on the level. As like Gotti and Ward. Now that you know that fight, I, w- I would have loved to see that for a, a fourth time. Um, but this fight, I, I leave well enough alone. Like I said, been there, done that. I much rather see him fight Bradley again and and do what he said he was going to do. Um, you know that fight was obviously uh, controversial, and uh, you know that's a, that's a person who definitely won a fight and and was uh and was robbed in manny pacquiao um that's the fight i would like to see again but it's just not going to happen because uh, as bob aram says the money's just not there because nobody's really going to pay to see bradley and bradley's going to have a hard time putting people in in seats when he moves on with his career he's just not an exciting fighter and that's just the uh the bottom line but but then again you look at manny pacquiao and you say well who else is there for him to fight and he's he's not fighting uh, Floyd Mayweather. That's just not going to happen. Uh, and uh, you know you got Marquez, you got Bradley, and then the other person that was being thrown around was uh, Miguel Cotto, and uh, you know he's fighting Austin Trout December first. Right, and you know the Mayweather fight really, you know um, they say it uh, it may have lost its shelf life. The shelf life is done. It's expired. I agree with that. You know, um, Manny Pacquiao has not looked good in his last couple of fights. Um, he needed the, the Timothy Bradley rematch to win that fight, to right that ship, to, to shut everyone up. And that could have catapulted him into a fight with Mayweather. Um, and then even win, lose, or draw against Mayweather, he gets to fight Juan Manuel Marquez for a fourth time because there will always be that, that interest there, especially in Mexico City like they're talking about. But... To not fight Timothy Bradley right now is a mistake. I, I think Timothy Bradley, I don't think Bob Arum is, is holding Timothy Bradley back from Manny Pacquiao because of money. I, I don't think that um, he would not be a draw for a rematch for, for Manny. And, and I'll tell you why. I, I think because of the controversy, um, it, it almost seemed at the time that it was set up uh, for the rematch. Because of that controversy, there would be some interest in that fight. Uh, I think they're taking a chance by having Manny Pacquiao lose the fight against Juan Manuel Marquez and then close the door for Timothy Bradley and Pacquiao rematch and close the door for for Mayweather and and Manny Pacquiao. It may open the door for Mayweather Bradley, but uh, but I, I think it's a mistake. I think he should have fought Bradley next. See what happens. Maybe secure the Mayweather fight and then close the career. Both of them, Juan Manuel Marquez and Manny Pacquiao, fight their farewell fight against each other right here in the same venue that they're talking about fighting in December, uh, Mexico City. That, that to me, even if uh, uh, Manny Pacquiao had lost that fight against Floyd, I think that there's still uh, uh, some uh, you know, interest in a fourth fight at that time. It would not expire. The interest wouldn't expire is my point. Yeah, I, I think that when, when when Aram sat down and, and he, he looked at the numbers, you know, you look at, at Bradley and Pacquiao, which generated, you know, 850,000 pay-per-view buys, and then you look in November of 2011 when he fought Marquez for the third time, and that was $5 million. So I, I think he just weighed those two and said even with a, uh, a rematch with Bradley, uh, it's not going to surpass the 1.25 because – People, it, 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 this is my way of thinking, he, or, uh, is that people already uh, knew that that 
Pacquiao won that fight. So why am I going to watch it again? It's going to be the same thing regardless if it's a bad decision or a good decision. Whereas the Marquez fight now being held in Mexico City, which generates even more interest because it's in it's in Marquez's hometown, um, that the, the 1.25 million could be surpassed. So I think when, when Aram sat down and, and looked at these numbers, that's the reason why he went for the, the – um, the fourth Marquez fight. Um, I really believe he's, he's going to have trouble selling uh, Timothy Bradley because, yeah. again, he's he, he, he's a boring fighter. He's 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 a he's a good fighter as far as his mechanics and he does everything nicely. You know, it kind of it kind of reminds me of like what you say about um, Andre Ward is that Andre Ward does everything, you know, good, but he doesn't have it. And I find that Timothy Bradley definitely doesn't have it. You know, I will not pay to watch Timothy Bradley's next pay per view. However, if you told me that Manny Pacquiao was fighting uh, Mayweather, I will pay for that fight. Right? No, I, that's, uh, I, I think you're right. And, and the other, the other thing about Juan Manuel Marquez and, and Pacquiao in Mexico City is the arena holds a hundred thousand people. So you know, and they're they're not getting the pay per views in Mexico. They're going to get the pay per views here. They're going to get the live gate in Mexico, which they could never fill up. Uh, uh, even a football. Well, they did Dallas. Uh, Cowboy Stadium, but uh, uh, anyway, hey, one last thing I wanted to mention about boxing, and uh, I'm going to jump back to Madison Square Garden real quick. You know, Mike, uh, in boxing, commissions are in place to, uh, uh, to at least my thought, uh, and and the way the rules are written, uh, commission rules, is the commission's in, in place to protect the fighters, to protect uh, uh, the, the patrons, uh, you know, everybody involved with the sport. Uh, they set their, um, you know, set of rules, which uh, varies from uh, state to state here in the in the United States. Um, but the general consensus is is that a boxing commission is supposed to promote the sport of boxing in their state. You know, Nevada does that. Uh, California is the only state that uh, that actually generates enough revenue from. Um, their tax money and, and fees and what have you to pay for the own op- their own operation of their uh, athletic commission. Uh, they're one of the only uh, states that uh, are able to do that because of the volume of uh, fights that they do and everything else. And then you have New York State Athletic Commission. And the New York State Athletic Commission, in my opinion, are just a, a bunch of bullies. They make it very hard for a, a promoter that isn't an established uh, uh, big time promoter like Golden Boy or, or Top Rank or, or someone you know with with tons and tons of cash. Um, very hard to do a show. Their their expense, their cost is is extravagant. Um, they uh, uh, I have no problem against their medical requirements, which happen to be the strictest uh, in the world. Um, I'm okay with that because it, it protects the fighters. But when it comes to the the promoter and, and the fan and and you know the fact that the the amount of money that just that commission is is costing us as New York State taxpayers, each one of them make a, a six figure salaries and everything else. I, I think it's terrible for the sport that they don't even try to promote it. it it's 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 like they don't give a crap, you know. And uh, I think it's terrible. It is. It is. But let me ask you, what what is the solution here? I mean, it's just it, it seems that like boxing, they do what they want, no matter if it's a promoter, if it's it's if it's uh, uh, the commission. It, there's no body to govern these rules and, and, and to um, you don't want the government involved, obviously. But what is the solution here? Not well, to fight in New York? Well, I, I think that. Uh, they don't want uh, the the current commission does not want people to fight in New York because they're lazy and they're on a power trip and they, they don't want to do their job. You know, right. um, what what we need is we need a commission. You see, the problem with commissions today is that they're appointed by whoever the government officials for that state are in. So what ends up happening is and it's the only sport like this, Mike, where you have non boxing people running the sport for that state. Could you imagine if 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 the NFL had people that had no experience in football at all uh, running the NFL, I mean, you can't even fathom that. You know, I mean, it's the same thing in, in baseball and hockey and basketball, except for boxing. And what New York needs is it needs a quality commission. Now, this current commission that's there now, 
the the one guy that's left over from the previous commission, which happened to have turned New York around. New York is has ha- traditionally have has had problems. They they were the mecca of boxing. They were the, they were the ones that that uh, basically ran the sport of boxing for for years and years, and then corruption uh, crashed. It came crashing down, and it took a long time before it got reputable again. And it was recent. You know, when I was promoting in New York in the early 2000s, it was at its worst, similar to what it is today. Uh, But then Ron Scott Stevens took over and he brought, you know, dignity back to the state of New York. And 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 all of a sudden shows started popping up and fighters started coming to the state and and they were generating revenue and and it was good again. And then, uh, you know, a new governor got elected and uh, subsequently, uh, a new uh, commissioner was appointed, and the end result is where we're at now. You know, so what's the solution? Get rid of who's in there now. The whole staff. The whole staff has to go and uh, and and create a boxing-oriented commission uh, that knows the sport, and I think it'll thrive in the state of New York. Do you think that um, the reason these, this hasn't happened yet is because, like you mentioned, the NFL and, and the other sports. Well, those sports, um, everybody loves those sports in the United States. Is the problem is the problem because boxing just doesn't have that much interest, and people aren't as interested. If you had as many um, boxing fans as you do the NFL fans, don't you think this would have been taken care of by now? Um, you know, that's a good question, and and I, I guess uh, I guess the answer would be yes, but. You know, what we're looking at here is just a commission. And when I look at other commissions that I've dealt with directly, um, you know, doing a broadcast or or being involved with fights or what have you, I see commissions that bend over backwards to to promote the sport for two reasons. Number one, to have the fights come to their state. And number two, they look out for the well-being of the fighter, knowing and, and understanding that the fighter puts in a lot of time. Most of these guys, especially the young fighters, they have a job, a full-time job, so they're training part-time, and they, they train for a fight, and they get to this to this point where uh, the fight's ready to happen, and New York, they pull the plug. Oh, what? What? Oh, this guy doesn't? Oh, oh they, they pull the plug. They're quick to pull the plug. They're, they're a commission that's looking for reasons to cancel an event, whereas most other commissions look for reasons to help to keep the event uh, from being canceled so that they... The fighters can get their payday, so the fighters can can you know fight and perform like they've been preparing for the last month or so. So that's my hang up that that it's it's that end of it. But but you make a great point. I mean, the numbers uh, would definitely drive it if if they were up. Yeah, but it also comes down to to revenue. You just said that you know when you deal with other cities and other states, people are saying, oh yeah, come come here, fight here, because they're going to make money. Now when you take it to New York. You got Jets, Giants, Mets, Yankees, U.S. Open. I, the list goes on and on, and that—that's where all the revenue is, is coming from. Uh, boxing is like a little blip on the screen when it comes to revenue, so they, that's why they're not putting as much interest and as much care into it as they should. And as far as caring about the fighters, well, they, you know, commissions have shown, you know, they just don't care like like the NFL cares about their their uh, their players with all these lawsuits, the concussions, and everything. They, who cares about a fighter? I mean, I do, you do, and 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 the, and the people involved in 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 the uh, boxing game, um, you know, trainers and whatnot. But on a whole, they have shown so many times that they have no concern for fighters' health. It's it's a shame. Well, I I, I don't know, I don't know uh, about that. I I think some states are are better than others. Like I said, the state of California, uh, they generate their own revenue to pay for their the expense of that commission. You know, uh, based on the volume of fights that they hold in that state, New York, they couldn't they couldn't generate the revenue to pay one salary. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's ridiculous. But uh, uh, anyway, oh, well, real quick, but before before we get off the point, this this being said, talking about New York and bringing fights there, they also uh, announced, I believe it was yesterday, that uh, Golden Boy Promotions, um, they're they're having a um, a fight at the new Barclay uh, Center, which is the home of the new. Uh, Brooklyn Nets uh, on October 20th, and you're going to see guys like uh, Eric Morales, Paulie Malinaji, uh, Danny Garcia, um, Pablo Cesar Cano. Um, so that was announced yesterday, and uh, that'll be the first fight at the new uh, Barclays Center on October 20th. And that's my point. My mm-hmm. point is is that New York Commission welcomes Golden Boy, 
Mm-hmm. You know, they welcome Golden Boy because it's a big thing. They don't have to leave Manhattan. You know, they get to, you know, they complain about stuff like hotel accommodations. What? There's not a there's not a five star hotel within twenty minutes of that location? Forget about it. That fight will never happen. You know. <laughs> no, that's what they do, you know. But right. uh anyway, let's talk a little baseball here before we get into uh uh, the football, we got a lot of stuff coming up. We've got uh, the official situation with the NFL. we got a breakdown of the AFC. We're going to talk about uh, the first uh, NFL game coming up in a couple of days. Uh, preseason, you know, what's the deal with that? Uh, you know, is it worth it? We've got a little college football uh, going on. But uh, right now, let's talk a little baseball. First question, you know, last week, uh, Roger Clements. Yeah, he gets let off. He gets uh, acquitted. And next thing you know, uh, he's playing baseball again for the Skeeters. He's playing for the Skeeters, right? And and come on, man. Roger Clemens made two hundred, almost $300 million over his career. He was a Cy Young winner 100 million times. Um, what's what's the underlying story here, man? At 51 years old, is, is he going to make a comeback in the in major leagues, or is this just something he's doing uh, for, I don't know, for kicks? Uh, it, I, me personally, I believe it's just something that Roger's doing to say, hey, look, I was acquitted. I didn't do steroids. I'm gonna go pitch, and that's all he's doing. Roger, Roger is all about the media. Um, you know, he 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 was on he, from the he yelled from the highest mountaintop. I didn't do steroids, and and uh, you know he won his case. Uh, but does that change uh, you know the public opinion about Roger Clemens? No, absolutely not. But he's just on his he's on his um, soapbox again, and uh, you know it's not about coming back into the major leagues no one's going to take roger clemens at 51 years old no one nobody needs you know him anymore i mean he barely gets his fastball up to 87 miles an hour um that being said you know his first outing he pitched three and a half scoreless innings big deal big deal and he's, he's supposed to pitch again uh you know september 7th um yeah it, it's just him doing it for kicks shoving it in the face of people saying i was acquitted and you know you have to keep in mind why Roger Clemens was was, was acquitted of, of steroids. Back you know when they had the congressional hearing, you know Andy Pettit, uh, Roger's close friend and teammate, came out and said, "Yeah, we spoke about this. He did you know HGH, and I did it because I was injured, and I, I shouldn't have done it, but I did." And and uh, you know he basically said he did it. Then when the trial starts, um, he says things like, um, you know, it's kind of foggy. Um, I, I might have misunderstood the conversation I had with Roger about HGH. I'm not 100 percent sure if he did or if he did. He kind of hemmed and hawed, and he gave – and by, by doing that, not giving a solid testimony, you know, he, he left reasonable doubt you know, to the jury. And uh, and that's why uh, Roger was acquitted. I'm sure that Andy was was prepped, you know, by his lawyers. Andy Andy did not want to throw his friend under the bus. He, that was the most uncomfortable posi- position for a, for a God fearing man like Andy Pettit to be in. And he he did it without quote unquote lying. You know, he said, well, you know, I might have misunderstood. That's all he had to do was put reasonable doubt in the jury's head. And that's why his friend was acquitted of, of, of HGH. And to me, you know, hey, listen, I, I know as well as you know, as well as, as well as Andy Pettit knows, he knows Roger did it, and he he just he he just you know around the, around and around the mulberry bush basically he, he hemmed and hawed and he gave him his his friend an out, and 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 uh, you know one day he's going to have to answer for that. But that's the only reason that Roger Clemens is not in jail right now because of his friend Andy Pettit. And he's going to say, "The devil made me do it, man." The devil. Yeah. Well, made me. you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the baseball, and I and I personally think that uh, Roger Clemens is uh, you know, going to pitch in the majors again. I, I, do you really? I, 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 I do. I do. I do think he's going to. Uh, I just well, have. I, mean, the, I, I, okay. I have this feeling that he is. But, well, let me ask you this real quick: Is he is he doing it because? Well, number one, someone's got to say, "Oh yeah, we're going to sign Roger Clemens." Number two, uh, do you think he's going to he wants to do this because by by you know signing a contract in the major leagues, he basically pushes the clock back five more years before his eligibility to a Hall of Fame because he's eligible, you know, the end of this year or next year, I believe. 
And right now, you know he's not getting into the Hall of Fame. You know it. By if he does sign a contract, and does in Rogers' mind is because he pushes the clock back five years, and people will forget about it. Is that what you? Is that what you? Why are you thinking he's coming back? I definitely think that he would. Uh, that that he doesn't care about the clock starting next year. I I think definitely, uh, and that's a great point uh, about pushing that clock back. All he's got to do is pitch. Listen, if he pit, if he somehow, you see the, the 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 weird position right now that he's in is that the Houston Astros have the have the rights on him, and they even have scouts with watching the guy. They're saying, ah, oh, well, you know, uh, we're still standing sick at scouts over there, but but I, you know, I only see one team that would that would you know take a chance on him, and that's the New York Yankees. I mean, that that's it. You know, uh, put him in a situation pitcher if he could do it. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think we've heard the end of uh, Roger Clemens. But but speaking of baseball, have you checked out my Oakland A's lately? <laughs> you know, I, I, the last time we talked about baseball, you put the whammy on the Mets. They've been in a downward spiral ever since, although they have won uh, 50% of their games out of the last 10. But, you know, I, I said, you know, watch out for the Oakland A's. They're a sleeper team. And you laughed. I should play back the, I should play back the, 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 the show. You laughed and said, yeah, well, Billy C., you know, bottom line is, yeah, you know, yeah, they're a gutsy team. Yeah, they're a, they're a, a you know, a, a scrappy bunch. That's what I referred to them as, a scrappy bunch. You said, but they're talent. They're just not going to be there. Well, guess what? As of right now, they are in the playoffs. They're the wild card team. What's your thoughts? Uh, I misremembered all that stuff you said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, uh, listen. All right, listen. To be fair, yeah, I did say that. I, you know, I didn't think this team could hold on. I, I thought this team was like, um, you know, the Pittsburgh Pirates, you know, a, a team that is improved but just doesn't have the staying power uh, as is, as the Baltimore Orioles. I, I didn't think they would be in the position that they are right now. Um, that being said, yeah, I mean uh, – Kudos to the Oakland A's. Kudos to, you know, Moneyball. I mean, <laughs> you got to give it to Moneyball. And, uh, you know, I I hope they do well. I, I always root for the underdogs when it comes to the playoffs. If my team is not there, I, I root for the underdogs. I want to see an upset. And, um, you know, if they do make the playoffs, that will probably be one of the teams that I'll be rooting for. That and whoever plays the Yankees, if – the Yankees make the playoffs. Okay, and that's a great segue. And by the way, the the, the uh, Oakland A's not only are the wild card team, but they they actually are in a good position to make a run uh, for the uh, uh, for the, the the title of of the uh, West Division because they're only four games out, four and a half games out. So, but let's talk about the Yankees. Um, you got uh, the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, who have been on fire from the opening day of the seasoning uh, season to right now, and uh, they're in a real important series with the Yankees. Uh, they played the first game last night, came out on top. Yankees are two games in first place. Uh, a few weeks back, man, they were they were double digits in first place. A lot of people think they're falling apart. You know, being a Met fan, I see the Yankees go through this crap every single year, Mikey. You know, they get a little little close to falling apart, and all of a sudden they shift into second gear, then third, and then they're 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 into the playoffs. Yeah, but you know what? This year, what they don't have that they have in previous years is solid pitching. They're having problems with their pitching. Um, obviously, um, uh, uh, CC just had a bad game. Is he tiring out? Um, Andy Pettit just threw off the mound uh, the other day, you know, the first time since he broke his uh, left fibula. You know, he threw 20 pitches. He's felt okay. He really thought he was going to come back a lot sooner. But, you know, you know, surprise, Mr. Pettit, you're 40 years old, and the body just doesn't heal the same as when you're 40 as when you're 25. So, uh, I mean, you look at the, you know, they got Phelps going today. They got Hughes, who's not having a very good season going tomorrow. I mean, who do you rely on on this uh, on this staff right now? They're definitely having problems, which they didn't have, like I said, in the past. Their pitching's always been solid. Now you look at their offense. You know, A Rod is still out. You don't have Teixeira right now. Um, it's these are things that the Yankees, you know, had in 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 the past that they're not having right now. You know, Chavez was 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 you know. Filling in nicely for uh, for A Rod, but you know he's tailed off a little bit. Um, you know Russell Martin's not even hitting his weight. You know Suzuki is still around two sixty five, two sixty six average. I mean the only one you look at and you shake it, shake your head 
that it's unbelievable what what this guy has done is is, is Derek Jeter. I mean, he's batting three twenty. Um, you know, so the Yankees definitely have some problems. Um, and what the what the thing about the Orioles that they have, it's not that they have great pitching or great hitting. They they they're, they're fearless. They have nothing to lose. And yep. and, and and they have a, a great manager in Buck Showalter. They're like the so, A's. They're like the Oakland A's. I mean, it's almost like t- the same team wearing different uniforms. They they really are. And I and and they're not maybe as scrappy as the A's. I think they're a more solid team uh, than the A's. But uh, uh, I, I don't know. And and it doesn't get any easier for the Yankees because uh, they play Baltimore uh, two more games. Um, then uh, then they got then they got to go to Tampa and play Tampa, who always does well against the Yankees. Uh, then they go back to Baltimore. Then they got to go to Baltimore. So. Um, it's not looking. Uh, it's not looking too good for the Yankees if 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 they don't uh, if they don't get back to their winning ways. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And they got. Don't forget. And they got Boston. I mean, Boston may be you know fourteen games out uh, of first place, but you know what 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 would be better you know uh, for Boston and then is to uh, to ruin the Yankees' chances of making the playoffs. I mean, that would be Boston's World Series right there. You're right. To keep the Yankees out of the playoffs. You know, Boston's going to go at them really really hard. So I mean, the Yanks—they uh, are definitely in trouble. You know, I, I listened. You, you hear about Yankee fans, you know, when they were ten games up, and then they were like only eight games, and then six games, and you know, you know, Yankee fans whine and cry more than any fan in <laughs> they, baseball they're the because worst. they're so spoiled. I mean, imagine being twenty-five years old, right? A Yankee fan—you know nothing but winning. I know. You don't know about the, you know the eighties and the seventies when you know they were up and down. The eighties were terrible. You can't you know? appreciate you can't appreciate being a fan unless you're a Mets and Jets and Nets fan. I mean, these Yankee fans make me sick. But you know what? There is another group of fans that are just as bad as the Yankee fans. And you know who they are? The Red Sox fans because they're the same. It's like the same type of person except they like different teams. And it's 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 funny to listen to them cut each other up as much as they do. But. Uh, uh, while we're talking about baseball, let's talk about the Mets, um, if we have to. But but you know the the, the Mets, uh, they're five out of ten. They're last, uh, you know, which is which is definitely since you put the whammy on them at the All Star break, and they've you know had that that very fast spiral downwards. Um, it's starting to look like uh, you know some of their young players are, are you know they're getting showcased right now, and and some of the young players are 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 coming through. But one of the things that uh, seems to be an issue here uh, is what do we do with uh, uh, David Wright? And, and, and the thing about David Wright is I said this uh, all along. I felt they should have traded David Wright away. I, I, I felt that they, they should have focused on, on keeping Jose Reyes. I thought that David Wright was, uh, was replaceable. I thought that maybe he could have been more bargainable because, uh, you know, he's usually healthy and all of that stuff. Um, he's concerned. I know that you have some uh, some points on him with some statements that he's made. But management, Mets management, at least at least the guys that are in that position today, um, are saying that their priority is to keep David Wright and Dickey, who, uh, you know, listen, I know he's even doing better than you thought, uh, especially second half of the season. But you know what? He's no spring chicken either. And, and I, I don't know if I'd build my rotation around him. Oh, I don't know if they're going to build a rotation around that. I don't know if he's going to be named, you know, the number one starter next year. However, because he's a knuckleball pitcher, it's not as taxing on on him as it would be on, you know, a, a guy who's a hard thrower who throws, you know, ninety five, ninety six miles an hour. Um, listen, Dickie, right now, he, he's he's the the candidate to uh, to win the Cy Young Award. Um, I mean, you have to keep him around. I believe he's on the contract next year. I'm not 100% sure, but um, you have to keep him there. As long as, as long as he continues to do what he's doing, and he's not he's not hurting, he's not his arm is fine. He's going to be in that rotation. Whether he they call him the number one, the number two, the number three pitcher, um, I, I don't think they're going to build around him. He's got like maybe three years left, possibly, possibly. Um, you know, they're going to build around a guy like uh, Matt Harvey. Right. That's, that you know, that's is who the they're going to build around. I don't know if he's going to be the, the number one guy next year. I mean, right now, if you had to pencil it in, they're going to say Santana's number one. Yeah, but you Santa- know what? who knows what Santana No, no. Hey, listen, I want to jump off. I got, I got Dave Murphy. He's in, the, he's in the chat room right now. 
And, uh, you know, he's saying he, you know, he's patting himself on the back. You know, Dave Murphy's a, a, a regular listener to the boxing show, the, the Talking Boxing Show, and he's also doing his own uh, all sports show as well. As a matter of fact, I, I think they go on air uh, pretty soon. But um, he's patting himself on the back right here, saying, see, I told you guys that Bobby Valentine was going to be a disaster in, uh, in, in Boston. You know, I, you and I have talked about this, and I just want to m- mention it to Dave before we lose him. Um, you know, I, I don't blame it all on Bobby V. And and the reason why I don't is because, you know, they had a team full of prima donnas, Mike. And, and you know, you take Bobby V. It, it kind of, the analogy I use is Bill Parcells. You know, the kick in the ass kind of coach. Bobby V is the kick in the ass kind of manager. But you need the right kind of players to perform on him. I think that the movement with Bobby V was the first step in cleaning up that clubhouse to get rid of all that, that, that dead wood and those, those prima donnas. And, and I think that in time, Bobby V could be the answer. He could be. You know, I mean, yes, he's, he's kind of out there, uh, but, uh, but I, I don't know if I blame him for the fall of, of the Red Sox for this year. What do you think? I, I, don't, I don't blame him, and, and neither does, does management, because they just prove to you by that blockbuster trade, by getting rid of all these guys, that Bobby V is, 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 is there to stay. You know, they get rid of Gonzalez, they get rid of Beckett, they get rid of Crawford. Gone. These guys are gone. They're, they're sticking with Bobby V. Number one, like you said, he inherited a team of prima donnas. You know, you know Francona lost that clubhouse, and, and Bobby hasn't gotten it back. But, you know, that being said, they're starting to get rid of some people. They're starting to make moves. And, uh, you know, he, he is there to stay. Now, keep in mind, there was a lot of injuries that they had to overcome and a lot of underachievers. I mean, Lester and, and Beckett, terrible, terrible this year. So a lot of underachieving was in, was uh, happening in Boston, and you can't blame that on, on Bobby V. And But management's actions are showing you that, you know, we're not – this is not a mutiny. You know, the, the, the inmates do not have the insi- uh, asylum. That's why we're getting rid of some people, and we're making moves, and we're getting youth, and, and we're getting uh, great prospects, and Bobby V is here to stay. There's, I, there's no doubt in my mind he comes back next year. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I, I would have liked to have seen Bobby V back with the Mets. Um, I, I think, you know, at what Murphy's point is is actually – True to a to a degree, and not his point. He well, the point that I didn't mention. He says he lost the team, and that he's out of touch. Um, and and that is probably the 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 most accurate statement. And the reason why I say that is because today's athlete. You know, we've talked about this before, Mike. In college, you know, especially college football, you know, um, and and college baseball, you know, teams are built around the coach. The coach is the main the main guy. You know, in college football or college baseball, you you bring you recruit students to come in, and you know that that coach or manager is going to um, is going to you know take those kids for for four years or, or you know sometimes five, and uh, you know I, they're going to get a whole new group of kids. So so the teams are built around the coaches, but in professional sports like baseball and football, especially, um, it's the other way around. You know, they invest these multi million dollar. I mean double digit million dollar contracts in, 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 in ball players. And the first guy to get blamed all the time is the manager or the coach. And I think that that is a, uh, it was the case with Bobby V this year, but I agree with you. I think the overall ownership and, and upper level management of this team, you know, sees that, Hey, you know what? Maybe in the long run, we're better off uh, building a team uh, around this coach that's that's young. Maybe it won't cost us as much. Maybe we can build a winning team. Maybe they're looking at some of these, uh, uh, you know, low uh, uh, revenue teams like uh, the Oakland A's and the and the and the Baltimore Orioles that are that are being competitive and and you know even even uh, uh, even even the White Sox uh, to a degree. I mean they they don't uh, they're in a big city, but they don't spend the money that uh, some of the other teams do. And and even Tampa Bay, who won the the World Series, so I, I mean uh, you know Texas is another example. Well, Texas isn't a good example. They spent a lot of money, but you know what I'm saying. I mean I, I think that it makes sense. And and by the way, until you put the whammy on them, the Mets were doing good with virtual no money you know so you know maybe that's the movement well look as far as it was what murph said is that um that bobby v is not uh, taking control of this clubhouse well neither did francona and they're two totally different managers one's laid back one's an, a- an ass kicking coach manager so nobody so they they went to the the extreme 
from Terry Francona, and that didn't seem to work. It's the players. It's their attitude. It's these, these prima donnas. But look what's happened. Euclid, gone. Gonzalez, gone. That, that, that terrible contract that they gave Crawford, gone. Underachiever in Beckett, gone. Jason so, Bay, gone. Oh, that's well, right. We got stuck with that's him. That's another story. Let's but, give him to the Angels. See, the, the, <laughs> the point is that, that, that the management is getting rid of the cancers in, in the clubhouse and not getting rid of Bobby V. And and they're gonna, like you said, they're gonna he's gonna build a team around him, you know, some few veterans, uh, you know, some some great prospects that they're picking up with these trades, and he will be back there next year. Yeah, no, there's no question about that. And uh, I I'm a I'm a Bobby V fan, but uh, but the last thing I want to do before we take a break here and then uh, uh, talk some football is uh, you and I talked about this uh, last time and. Uh, you know, uh, Strasburg from the Nationals is, is having a fantastic year, and, and, and this is a guy that uh, uh, is really uh, someone that's fun to watch, and there's no question about it. But we talked about um, the team putting him on a, uh, a limit, uh, you know, games and innings or whatever they put, and the bottom line is the formula shakes down to maybe one or two more starts left, and that's it. His season's going to end. We both think that that's ludicrous because here's a team that has been in first place pretty much from the beginning of the season. They look like the strongest team in the NL, and you're going to take your, your one of the reasons why you are uh, so strong, and, and you're going to put them on the shelf. Um, and, and I understand the, the medical reasons, and I understand that they're thinking future and everything else, but, you know... <sighs> We're talking World Series opportunity here, Mike. And, 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 and like we said a couple of weeks ago, I think it's ridiculous. I thought it was ridiculous then. I think it's ridiculous now. What's your thoughts? It's absolutely ridiculous. How, how often do you get a chance to, to get into the playoffs and compete for the World Series? You know, uh, Let's talk about the 2000 bets. They were in the World Series. They thought, oh, this is great. We've got a good team. We'll be back next year. Hello. Hey, by the way, Mike, uh, get into the chat room because Dave Murphy's pulling his hair, whatever's left of it, out of his head. He, he's got some things to chat to you about. So get in the chat room. But go ahead. I mean, it's ridiculous at this point, right? Yeah, it is. Like, like I said, how often do you get a chance to compete, to, you know, to win the World Series? I mean, you know, 20 years ago, the guy comes off Tommy John surgery. Are they going to pull him after 160 innings? Absolutely not. You know, and all we talk about today is how the athletes today bigger, stronger, faster. Um, uh, you know, better supplements to take, um, uh, better, better workout uh, regimens. Um, well, if that's true, why are we babying these athletes? Do you really think if he goes more than 160 innings, he's gonna he's gonna fall apart and break and ruin his career? Ask Nolan Ryan that. Ask him. Uh, well, I mean, the, it, the, these guys were just talking in the chat room. They were just talking about uh, Sandy Koufax. Here's a guy that, you know, uh, similar type of, uh, uh, you know, velocity pitcher and everything else back in the day. His career was cut short because of uh, tendonitis, actually, in his elbow is what ruined his career. And, uh, you know, could you imagine them pulling a guy uh, like uh, Nolan Ryan or Tom Seaver? Actually, today uh, was, a, was Tom Seaver uh, on this day in, in, in baseball history. Tom Seaver became the first uh, uh, pitcher uh, to do uh, what did he do? Uh, yeah, I don't have it in front of me, but he did something. I think maybe two hundred strikeouts in in eight consecutive years or something like that. I, I think that's what it was. I think that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. But uh, um, anyway, I, it's it's crazy, man. It, it definitely is. But listen, we're going to take a short break. You're going to go in there and calm Murphy down before he sets the whole computer system on fire. And uh, when we come back. Uh, we'll talk uh, a little football. We've got a lot of football to talk about. We want to break down the uh, uh, AFC. I want to talk a little about the uh, officials in that situation. Uh, We've got the Jets and Giants. Uh, uh, some talk about the Jets, uh, how, how dismal their season's going to be. The Giants, well, you know, they're opening their, the NFL season on Wednesday night. They're playing the Cowboys. We'll talk about that. And I also want to talk about the preseason in general. You know, it's, it's something I've got a couple of questions for you, Mike. Uh, I think it's kind of a joke in a way, and, and, and I, I think the preseason is actually the first four games of the regular season, uh, the way it works out now. And, uh, you know, I, I wonder, is the preseason helping or hurting teams? So uh, uh, we'll talk about that all coming up in about two minutes.
If you're in upstate New York and you need a trucking company, then you need Roselli Enterprises. Roselli Enterprises is trucking at its finest. They have it all. Dump trucks, dump trailers, walking floors, flatbeds, flow boys, tankers, loaders, and a full line of roll-off containers for any job, big or small. Roselli Enterprises is also the source for all your sand, gravel, and topsoil needs. Visit them on the web at RoselliTrucking.com or call 315-433-5115. That's 315-433-5115 and tell them Billy C sent you. Talk and Boxing with Billy C now has official merchandise available on TalkinBoxing.com. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies and mugs, and yes, even undergarments. Talk and Boxing apparel is the perfect gift for the boxing fan in your life. Log on to www.TalkinBoxing.com. That's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G.com. And place your order today. We've got a great matchup tonight. Fighting out of the left corner is the number one ranked contender. No, he is not. I'm sorry, but who are you? I am the ideal computer. I am programmed to provide only fair and unbiased boxing rankings. This fighter is the number 15 ranked contender. Fair and unbiased boxing rankings? That's a new concept. Actually, it is not. The IBO has provided unbiased computerized rankings for many years. Well, we've still got a great fight tonight, folks. In the left corner is the number 15 ranked contender. The IBO, the champion of integrity. Learn more at IBOboxing.com. And we're back. You're listening to Talk in New York Sports with Billy C. and Brooklyn Mike. And uh, we're uh, getting ready to talk a little football. And uh, I'm here with uh, Brooklyn Mike. And uh, we got the uh, chat room going. Mike's uh, defending himself in there. And I, I just say, let's go Mets, man. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> come on. You know. And, and be careful, Murphy. You know, don't, don't tell uh, Brooklyn Mike who your favorite team is because then he'll put the whammy on him the way he did uh, – for my team, the Mets, uh, you know, we get out of the All Star break, and uh, Brooklyn Mike says, "Oh, but you know, did you realize that the stats are exactly the same as it was last year before they fell apart?" And then uh, the Mets haven't won since. So, uh, uh, anyway, let's talk a little football. First and foremost, you know, uh, the the officials and and the NFL uh, just can't come to terms right now, Mike. And uh, you know, you know what surprises me? Number one. Uh, nobody traditionally beats the NFL when, when you go head-to-head with them uh, in anything, you know, uh, whether you're uh, a new league, uh, which, incidentally, there's another new league, uh, the USFL, which the original USFL was in the 80s, and, and I love that, but they, they're back, and, and they're signing some, some, uh, play, uh, some old-time uh, NFL players to uh, their board of directors, some, some big names like Marshall Falk and uh, uh, Lincoln Kennedy. And also Chris Dolman, who was uh, just inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, this past year. I mean, they're, they're really going to make a run, they claim. And uh, it's curious to see if, if they fall on their face, too. But uh, nobody traditionally beats the NFL. And it looks like the uh, officials aren't going to beat them either. The NFL is ready to move on with uh, uh, scab uh, officials. What's your thoughts? Uh, with the scab officials? I think <laughs> Well, it's with the whole thing, the whole thing. Um. Well, let me let's let me uh, address the first thing is that uh, I, I think the USFL, this this new league that they're going to start up, I, I think it's just going to fill a void for when the NFL is, is not playing, because, you know, I think they're just trying to capitalize on the popularity of football and put a little money in their pockets, make a little revenue. Um, it's not going to, you know, surpass the NFL by no means, but they're doing it at a time when I believe the NFL is not active. So it's, I think it's just going to fill a void for those of, those of us who just love the, love the game. As far as the um, the uh, replacement referees, I, I think it's it's horrible because uh, number one, if you watch any of the preseason, there have been just so many missed calls and and bad calls. Um, these guys really have you know their work cut out for them, and you know and I think it's it's going to add to um, to injuries. In, in the uh, in the NFL because you know now that you don't have the the uh, you know the, the the regular refs there who who know the game backwards and forwards and who who don't take crap from players you know you're gonna have players testing these referees and 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 taking that you know that that cheap shot you know um, and trying to get away with things 
and which could very much cause injury if you think about it. So, you know, this is a ten billion dollar a year industry, and you're telling me you can't settle with these guys? It's nonsense. Ten billion dollars, and you, it, it's got to get settled because you know what? You're risking the players' health by having replace, replacement referees. You have got guys in here who, who referee high school games. Do you think a high school game has the speed of an NFL game? Not at all. I mean, even if, even the, the jump from college to pro. The speed is incredible, and these guys are going to catch things. No, no, it, it, it's terrible. You know, an industry like this should be able to settle, and and they better do it soon because if you're going to start seeing marquee players go down because of injuries, because of of, of cheap shots, you're going to have a problem. No, uh, yeah, the injury factor is uh, is definitely a, an issue. Um, you know, the knowledge uh, of, of the game, uh, you know, you, that could be argued, I guess. But uh, the speed is, I think, uh, one of the greatest points you made because even the players, uh, when they get to the NFL, they could be, uh, uh, you know, one of the best collegiate football players on the field. And they get to the NFL and they're like, that, that's, that's the common thing. Oh, the speed is so much, it's so much quicker. But, uh, uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. I, I think traditionally... You know, it's a take it or leave it attitude with the NFL, and and they're so powerful, and and they have so much juice, like we said earlier in the show, that uh, basically, you know, not to use a baseball term, but it's their baseball, they get to pitch, you know, and if you don't like it, you know, uh, try and go do something else, and and the bottom line is, you know, the officials are, they're in a tough position too, because there is no other choice, you know, the the NFL is a monopoly, Uh, there is the only pro league, you know, so, um, uh, you know, I mean, I doubt that they're looking forward to, to, to a spring league like the USFL or, or uh, you know, a European league or a Canadian football league or anything like that. So, uh, uh, arena league, you know, so I, I don't know. I, I think they're going to eventually uh, come to terms. Maybe they won't be happy, uh, but uh, it's either that or nothing, you know. And, and, and in time, those replacement refs will, will come up to speed. It's at what price? Yeah, well, it's it's at the price of the players, unfortunately, and and that's not good because you know the players are, are behind the the permanent referees or the the, the officials. Um, they're standing behind them because they want them there. Um, as far as, as as you know, you said there's no other choice for these referees. Well, let's keep in mind that the. This is a part-time job for these guys. I yeah, mean, but that's of some of the yeah, lawyers. But, they have other income, is what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's some like, of that's some of the issue. The, some of the issue is is that the NFL wants to, um, or or I, maybe I might have it backwards, but uh, there are permanent positions that they're arguing over. I, I think the the officials want more, or maybe the NFL wants more, or or whatever the, the case is. The NFL wants more. Okay, right. the NFL wants more. Okay. So so I mean, you know, and 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 the money is pretty damn good. I was I was surprised to see how much money that they make. Yeah, do you know the average referee makes $149,000? That's good stuff for a part-time that's, job. That's fantastic for you a know? part-time job. Jeez, they, I wish that, I had a full-time job that made that. Hey, that's <laughs> the, you know, the only people who make more than that is the New York State Athletic Commission people, man. I mean, you know, but uh <laughs> but anyway, hey, listen. What do you want to do? I'm going to throw it up to you right now. Do you want to break down the AFC and then go to the Jets and Giants? Or you want to? Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we? Why don't we break down the AFC real quick so we can get make sure we get all of that out of the way? Um, okay, is, is that okay? I mean, you want to do that? That yeah, works for me. All right, what do you want to that do? A- AFC North. What, what's your thoughts? Uh, well, you know, you got the two mainstays in there: Pittsburgh Steelers, Baltimore Ravens. You know, they're going to be uh, right up there come playoff time. Uh, I'm interested to see, you know, how Cleveland does with their new rookie quarterback and and the uh, rookie running back from Alabama, uh, Trent Richardson, who you and I have spoke about several times. That we would have loved to see the Jets, you know, trade up for him. And don't, I don't they even still care have Reddit Darrell Revis to get this guy? Cause... I would have too. But don't they have that other running back too in Cleveland? That 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 hard nosed guy just uh, to compliment uh, Richardson. Who's the guy that they had last year? You're talking? No, I know who you're talking about. No, he's with Kansas City now. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Peyton Hillis, you mean? Yes, Hillis, Hillis. Yeah. Peyton Hillis is now with with um, Kansas City. That's right. Um, uh, you know, Murph is saying cribs, cribs, cribs. Um, yeah, but cribs is a, is a is a wide out. He's not a running back. You know, yeah. he's a special teams guy. So um, yeah, Peyton Hillis is now with uh, Kansas City. But um, you know, looking at this at this division. Uh, you know the the two top dogs are going to be there at the uh, at the end of the season. I, I think if um, Flacco stays healthy 
and if Roth- Roethlisberger stays healthy, I think the Ravens are going to edge out the Steelers this year and win the division. Doesn't necessarily mean they're going to go further in the playoffs. Uh, Pittsburgh could very well get the wild card, but um, I just think that. With the development of of Torrey Smith, the wide receiver for the Ravens, um, and his chemistry that he's been showing with uh, Joe Flacco, um, I think this is going to be a uh, an improved offense, which is what they need, because their defense has always been solid, and even with an aging defense, uh, one of the best defenses in, in football, um, and uh, and. Um, I think that that trend will continue, and there's not going to be much of a drop off uh, there, especially with Ray Lewis, um, you know, wanting you know more from those guys. And he's a guy who's 37 years old, and he's still playing like he's you know 26. So um, yeah, that's that's my thoughts as far as the uh, NFC North. I, I, I see the Ravens on top, just edging out the Steelers, um, and also the Bengals. I mean, uh, again, a, a team that's uh, definitely on the rise and not the decline. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, interesting to see what they do as well, especially with second-year quarterback uh, Dalton and and receiver um, A.J. Green. They picked up um, Ben Jarvis uh, Green-Ellis from uh, the New England Patriots. Uh, again, always a stout uh, defense with uh, Marvin Lewis as their head coach. Um, it, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be one tough division. And uh, just see the Ravens just just sneaking it out, and I see everybody uh, improving in that division. I agree. I think that division is going to be improved across the board. Uh, I agree with you also about the Ravens. I, I, I'm a big Ravens fan. I, I love the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, you know, although their defense is starting to age a little bit, I, I think we're still going to get a good year out of Ray Lewis. Um, I think that Pittsburgh is not going to be – Although when we when we do our predictions a little later, I I do have them up there, uh, but but I agree. I think Baltimore is gonna gonna edge them out, but I think Cleveland, I think Cleveland, I think that I am so high on Trent Richardson, and uh, Murphy's telling us, uh, you know, he's he's hurt right now. But listen, he's not that hurt. He it, had and, a minor yeah, knee operation. Yeah, and, I mean, he'll be good to it's go. It's nothing I mean, to yeah, worry. But there is concern because anytime you hear the word operation. Yeah, you, there's going to be concern for this guy. Yeah, but, um, but I'm not he, concerned for that guy because I watched him all for the last two years, three years with, with Alabama. Um, even the year that, that Ingram won the Heisman, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Trent Richardson could have won it that year. I mean, it was a, it was a two-back system. I love that guy. You, you and I both said it a couple of weeks ago. We, we were so pissed that the Jets didn't do something like trade trade Revis, who turns is turning out to be a, a a big problem for the Jets, and and will continue all this year and forever. Because uh, and and I think some of that problem is is uh, the coach's fault uh, for for putting him on that pedestal. But that's another story. But uh, I think Cleveland's going to finish uh, better than than you think. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to be a under five hundred team. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. Let's take a look at the AFC South uh, again. Uh, this this particular division. Could be up for grabs as well. I I, I don't think it's up for grabs. I, I think that the clear cut uh, powerhouse in this team in this division is is the uh, Houston Texans. Yeah. Um, if Matt Schaub is uh, kept upright for the season, um, I I think the Texans run away with this division. Um, you know, Jacksonville, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be an awful team. Um, matter of fact, I, I predict that Indianapolis will, will surpass um, Jacksonville and actually give Tennessee a run for its money to finish in second place. Um, but as far as uh, I mean, I, you can't you can't bet against uh, Houston. Uh, I, I think Kubiak has, has definitely got that team um, pointed in the right direction. He's 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 done a great job. He's been with them for quite a while now, and uh, they know him. They know that system. And uh, they're comfortable there. Um, Arian Foster just signed a, a big contract with them. He's happy. I, I just see, and you know, hope, you know, you got to see make Andre Johnson stays healthy this time, as well as Shab. Don't forget, those two guys were out. You know, Shab was out for the rest of the season, and, and Andre was never the same because of the injury. And they still managed to get to the playoffs, and, and, and you know, uh, they lost to the uh, to Ravens last year. However, that team stays healthy. That's that. Matter of fact, you asked me. I don't know, two three weeks ago we were talking and then you and I thought you were asking me you know who wins um, the AFC and that's actually my team if that team stays healthy I think they that team makes it to the Super Bowl 
They're an but, exciting um, team. They're an exciting team. But absolutely. I, but I think that injury uh, to, to uh, Schwab is, is going to be uh, – I think it's going to haunt him this year. I, I don't think he's going to be – that was a serious injury, and, and it, takes, it takes a season to get back, in my opinion. And, and, yes, they have a great receiver, and their running game is exciting. And they're de- I mean, they're a solid team. They, they are. And they're, then they do have the luxury of playing some weak-ass teams in the, in the South. Um, the Colts shouldn't do – uh, that well with Andrew Luck, although they, they did show some glimmer of hope. Um, Jacksonville, I agree with you. Tennessee is a sleeper team. They they could go either way. You know, we'll have to wait and see how Chris Johnson uh, does this year. So That's a big if, Chris Johnson. Everybody, you know, he was high in everybody's fantasy football a couple years ago, and he just he just declined uh, tremendously last year. So if he ha- he needs to pick it up like he did two years ago for, in order for that team to, uh, I mean, to, to, to do anything in that division. Um, as far as Indianapolis, uh, I like, I mean, have you, have you watched any of Andrew Luck during the uh, preseason? You know, I mean, I, this guy, it's amazing that, you know, you had Peyton Manning for all those years. Now all of a sudden you have, uh, Andrew Luck, who's going to, you know, run this team for the next 15 years. Um, talk about, you know, you know, luck <laughs> basically, uh, that's, that's, that's almost 20 something years of, uh, you know, having an elite quarterback and, uh, in, you know, other teams just don't have that kind of uh, um, fortune. So I, I think he's going to make that team such an improved team. Um, doesn't have a great running back in Donald Brown, but he's capable. Um, Austin Collie has been hurt with the concussion. Still has Reggie Wayne, and he, he people don't realize that the tight end that they picked up, uh, Kobe uh, Fleener, was it was Andrew Luck's uh, tight end at Stanford. And uh, that's going to be a, a, his his go to guy as far as getting down to the red zone. They, those guys have had chemistry throughout college, and I don't see any reason why that shouldn't continue in the pros. Yeah, uh, I think he's going to have his moments, but uh, he's going to have mostly bad moments. I, I think next year might be a, a year for him, but the year after could be, very well be his breakout year. I, I think if he stays stays healthy this year, and we're talking about Andrew Luck. Um, I think that's going to be a, a huge victory for the Colts. Let's take a look at the AFC West. Um, you know, this is an in- interesting uh, division because, you know, you, you mentioned about Ellis, uh, uh, Hellis. Uh, what, it's Ellis or Peyton, Hel- Peyton Hellis? Peyton Hellis. Hellis, Hellis. Right. Hellis, Hellis. You know, hey, come on, man. If I'm not murdering names, it's just not me. But, uh, you know, Kansas City, they, they, have a, they have another decent running back, if I recall well, too. And, I, and uh, um, you know, I think it all boils down to the quarterback with, with, with Kansas City. And, and I think they might have made a mistake um, with, uh, with jumping on uh, uh, Cassell the way they did. Um, but I still think they're going to be a competitive team. What, what's your thoughts? Well, again, it, it depends on, like you said, the running game. They do have Jamal Charles, and, uh, you know, he has to – you know, come back with a with a with a pretty big season himself. Um, Matt Castle, listen, he, he's been a different quarterback since he's left New England. There's no doubt about that. That just shows you, you know, uh, the system in New England compared to the system in in Kansas City. You know, coaching staff on down. Uh, yeah, they put all their eggs in a basket. Matt Castle. I don't think he's the guy to take him to the promised land by any means. But that being said, uh, I don't see them contending. Um, this division, I, I think it's going to come down to San Diego and and, and, and Denver. I, I think Denver, um, as long as, as as Peyton Manning stays healthy and he stays upright, um, I don't see any reason why they don't win in that division. Um, you know, San Diego always has trouble towards the end of the season. They 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 you know they they have stretches where they're they're, they're they look unbeatable and everybody thinks they go in the Super Bowl, but then they just fall apart. Um, but Denver Broncos, you know, they made it to the uh, to the playoffs last year with a quarterback named Tim Tebow. Wait, 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 T- Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow. You ever hear of him? I, I, <laughs> I think I might have heard from him. I think he played uh, for Florida, right? He was a yeah, Florida I believe Gator, so. I believe yeah. so. I'm not sure quite where he is right now, but no. uh, anyway, uh, yeah, they made it to the playoffs with a guy named Tim Tebow and 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 beat the uh, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And that's a quarterback who couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. So now you have a quarterback that's only going to make Demarius Thomas, um, Decker. He's going to only make these guys much, much better. So, uh, and then you know they have a capable running game with uh, with McGahee. 
uh, this team and then the defense. The defense is great. Defense. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love listen. the defense. <laughs> if 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 Peyton Manning stays healthy, yep. The Denver Broncos are uh, could very arguably be one of the top teams. Uh, they are the top teams in in in, in the AFC. There, there's no question about it, if he stays healthy. I mean, just everything you just said. You know, they they went as far as they did in the playoffs without a quarterback, basically. Um, and the rest of that 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 team is together. And didn't it, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they get some of? Uh, didn't they get at least one? Of uh, of Peyton's receivers from from the Colts uh, didn't 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 somebody go with him? Yeah, you're you're talking about uh, the tight end J- Jacob Tammy. Oh oh okay, but what what no. happened? To, um, uh, uh, I thought one of the receivers went over there too. No, they have. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry, you're correct. Uh, I think they have Brandon Stokely. Yeah, I I, I, I mean, no, Brandon Stokely's not a top receiver. No, but he's but he's just he knows he knows yeah, Peyton. The Peyton will go. He knows Peyton, but um. I think Demarius Thomas and, and Eric Decker, who are their number one and number two receivers, I think they're going to have amazing years. Um, and I, I, again, if, if, if Peyton Manning stays upright with that swarming defense, which I think is only going to get better, um, is uh, that team – I mean, a lot of people are picking this team to get to the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. No, I, I yeah. can see why. Now, um, uh, real quick, because I, I want to I make sure we have plenty of time that, to get – through some stuff that we need to get through. But uh, real quick, the Oakland Raiders, most experts are picking the Raiders to finish last in the division. And, you know, I'm looking at the Raiders, and they kind of make me nervous um, uh, because I'm not a big Raider fan. But, you know, Carson Palmer uh, was thrown into that system. And towards the end of the season, they they started taking on a, a different look to me last year. And you know, you, you look at you look at some new stuff this year. You, you, they got a new general manager in place. You got Carson Palmer coming back. You, the defense wasn't that bad to begin with last year. Um, you know, they made a, a couple of moves here and there. Are they going to be a team that's going to finish better than than the experts say, or are they going to be the cellar dwellers in the West? No, I, I don't. I don't believe that they're going to be the cellar dwellers in the West. They won eight games last year, and eight games without you know having um, Darren McFadden services for twelve of those games. Now they have a healthy McFadden. Um, they have um, uh, Darius Haywood Bay, who when 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 Al Davis um, you know picked him uh, two three years ago to be on this team, everybody was like shaking their heads. This guy was all speed. And he, he didn't know how to run a route. Well, this guy has really, really improved um, to the point where he's, he's, he's getting nice chemistry with um, with uh, Carson Palmer. So if you keep McFadden healthy, and McFadden's got you know got some nice backups in in, in Mike Goodson, um, you keep him healthy, and and Carson Palmer improving his his chemistry with um, with Haywood Bay, and of course you have uh, more on the other end. Uh, this team is, is is definitely a team that's going to surprise, and I definitely don't think they're going to finish in last place. As a matter of fact, I think they're going to improve on their eight wins from last year, and could possibly be a, a double digit uh, team. You know, pulling in maybe ten or eleven victories. All right, let's take a look at uh, our uh, our sickening division, and that's uh, the AFC East. Um, I can't see why New England isn't going to be the uh, the tops in this division. How's the rest of the division going to fall? Uh, well, yeah, you know, we've said it so many times. It, it gets, you know, it gets monotonous. Keep saying it, but as long as uh, you have the two Bs there, Brady and Belichick, um, this is always going to be the team to beat in the AFC East. You know, during preseason. Uh, you know, this is the only division where where three teams didn't record a win in preseason. I mean, we're you know we've been hearing about oh the Jets, the Jets, the Jets. They're zero and four. Well, so was Buffalo, and Buffalo went out and spent some money, you know, this off season. But they've shown some promise. Uh, you know, I haven't I've seen highlights of their games, but and I haven't watched them as diligently as I have watched the Jets. But there's something there. They also have you know. Uh, uh, good running back and Freddie Jackson. They have Stevie Johnson. Fitzpatrick is a capable quarterback. Um, he's not a superstar, but they just don't have superstar quarterback either. So I, I see the, the Buffalo Bills improving. Um, I, Miami, Miami is going to be hit or miss. You know, new coach, new quarterback. 
Um, I don't see them quite at 500. Maybe if they're lucky, they'll, they'll reach 500 this year. And as far as the Jets go, listen, you know, they haven't showed us not one wildcat formation this whole preseason. Like it's like they're saving everything, uh, you know, under lock and key. You know, they're talking about, oh, don't worry. We only scored one touchdown in preseason. But you wait till the regular season starts and you're going to see some. Well, you know what? Personally, bro, is that I don't I don't fear. I don't think that, the, the, you know, defense oh, coordinators are like shaking their boots right now. Because the Jets haven't un- unleashed the uh, wildcat package, we haven't seen anything, and they're going to catch us, catch other defensive coordinators off guard. I don't think so. I, I think that the offense is dismal, dismal, and 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 you know, you know, they've been talking about how how good the defense looks, and and um, this could possibly be one of, one of the better defenses in Jets history. Well, okay, let's say it is. Let's say it is. But you know what? If they're going to be on the field. Uh, you know, a lot longer because the offense cannot move the ball. I don't. I don't care if you have the 85 Bears. You know, you keep somebody on the field for for a long time, they're going to be hurting, and, and they're not going to, you know, show the potential that they what they can be because of all that time on the field. And I think that that the offense being as inept as it, it possibly could be is going to cause the defense problems, and then you're going to start having dissension in the locker room, which has happened before. What's happening so, now? Uh, yeah, let, we'll, let, we'll, let's get into the Jets in a second, but but uh, you know I, I don't argue with you. New England's going to finish first. I, I you know I think Buffalo very well may finish second in this division. I I, I think that uh, you know it's going to be that opening week for for the Jets in Buffalo is really going to. I hate to say it, but I, I think it's really going to tell us uh, where each team is going to be. And 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 to be honest, which I think Buffalo. Scares me, but Buffalo scares me last year. They scared me last year. They scare me this year. They scare me every year when, as being a Jet fan. Uh, the Buffalo Bills are a team to watch out for. They're a dangerous team, especially when they're playing the New York J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. So um, let's take a look at how you predict um, the, uh, the divisions are going to go. Or let's start off with the NFC. Um, who's going to win the West? And so, so basically, what what I'm going to go through right now is I want to know who's going to win the West, who the two wild card teams are, and then who's going to be uh, the NFC champion. So, so who's going to win the West? In the NFC, NFC. West, it's to me, it's a clear cut uh, winner, and that's the San Francisco 49ers. I, I, this team, you know, you, you take away that one player on the team, uh, Williams, and this team was going to the Super Bowl last year. They got a stout defense. Uh, best in, in, in football and an improved offense. Um, this team, and I love their head coach. Um, anytime you can get a Harbaugh to, to coach your team, jump on it. Um, this team is the clear-cut uh, division winner in the uh, in the NFC West. I agree. I have 49ers as well. What about the uh, NFC North? Who's going to win that division? Uh, you know, that's. I mean, it, it, it's going to be Green Bay. But it's going to be close because you have three teams in there that can that can put up double digit wins, being the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions. Uh, Minnesota is just a mess. Um, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with Adrian Peterson if he's going to stay healthy for the whole season. I think Christian Ponder is going to be a, a, a capable quarterback in the NFL. But you know, look at the other quarterbacks in that division: Aaron Rodgers, Matt Stafford, and Jay Cutler. And Jay Cutler. While he hasn't been, you know, an elite quarterback by any means, he does have his old quarterback coach, and he does have his old best receiver in Brandon Marshall. So uh, again, that's going to be one tough division. And uh, but I do see Green Bay. I think the fact that they lost in Green Bay to the Giants last year, and and being 15 and one, they're going to come in with a chip on their shoulder, with an improved defense, and they're going to want to steamroll. Um, that that's the team you know right now in that division to beat i disagree with you i think that the green bay packers are going to have a bad year i i, I really do wow. I, I i know i know i mean statistically they it's, everybody's picking them that to be super bowl <clears throat> everybody says aaron Rodgers rogers is the best quarterback in, in the nfl uh everybody's saying that he's going to be the best quarterback for the next 10 years you know I, um I, I i'm picking the bears i'm picking the bears to win the north um, I, I just have a feeling that, for all intent and purposes, 
Uh, the Green Bay Packers were the best team in the NFL last year. They should have won the Super Bowl. They should have been in that Super Bowl. And I'm going by that thought process where it's tough to repeat to that level. That 15-1 and season, how do you better a 15-1 and season unless you go undefeated? Um, that's not going to happen. I, I just think that the, the, they're going to be the team that everybody's going to try to beat. They're going to have a really tough go at it. I, I'm picking the Bears to win uh, the North. How about the South? Who, who do you like in the South? The NFC South, uh, you know, usually, I, uh, you know, you got to say New Orleans Saints, but because of what's been happening over in New Orleans with, uh, you know, all the lawsuits and the, the suspensions, um, you know, their, their head coach has been banned for the whole season. I, I don't think Drew Brees can do it on his own. Uh, you know, it, it's it's head coached by committee. So um, that being said, I like the Atlanta Falcons. I, I think even though we had a very, very good year last year, Matt Ryan uh, throwing for over 4,000 yards, 29 touchdowns, I think he's going to surpass that. I think this team is, 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 you know, second year with Julio Jones, who, who, don't forget, didn't get training camp last year because of the lockout. And, you know, he was bothered by a hamstring injury, but still he had a phenomenal rookie season. And I think with a, with a year under his belt and, and having a full camp and OTAs this year, I, I, I think he's going to be uh, Matt Ryan's new target, uh, surpassing Roddy White. So you have two two great receivers. You still have the solid – I don't care how old he is. You have the solid um, uh, tight end in Tony Gonzalez. And then uh, you know this team is going to be a passing team. It's going to be – they're going to be like the, the Green Bay Packers. They're not really going to re- rely on a running game because Michael Turner is just not the Michael Turner of old. And um, you know they're going to use Jaquez uh, Rogers out of the backfield, kind of like the Jets did with LaDainian Tomlinson, uh, you know, quick back out of the backfield, just like Darren Sproles of New Orleans. Uh, this team is going to be an attacking, passing team. I think they're going to be a better team than last year. I think their defense has improved, and uh, I see them winning the division with uh, New Orleans coming in second. And, and, and two two improved teams with Carolina Panthers and, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, Carolina definitely improved on defense. I don't think uh, Cam Newton's going to have the year that he did last year. I think he's going to stay in the pocket a lot more. Um, uh, but still, he does have those legs if he needs them to get out of trouble. And, and Tampa Bay, with the new coach, uh, Shiano from Rutgers, and, and, and uh, he, you know, they moved up in, in the uh, draft to, to pick up Doug Martin, who has just been named the, uh, the number one back. And uh, with the acquisition of uh, Vincent Jackson, this team is definitely an improved team on offense another year for uh, josh freeman under his belt um this team could very well win uh you know nine ten games but i think the clear-cut uh division champion will be the atlanta falcons over the new orleans saints i'm picking the falcons as well i think that uh the the falcons will win that division uh you know i I love julio jones (laughs) loved him you know I, i watch him i'm a big alabama fan uh love julio jones east uh who do you like in the east to win uh, I know it's going to pain you because it pains me too. <laughs> it, and, it's going to pain me to say it, but it has but, to be uh, the it, New York it's Giants. It's going to be the New York Giants, right? I mean, it, 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 listen, they, they're coming back with basically the same team. Uh, you know, they they got in at nine and seven last year. Uh, they're going to win. They're going to win the East. Uh, okay, so we got our four winning teams uh, for the divisions. You and I disagree with the North. You got the Packers. As far as the wild card, I got the Packers in my wild card. Uh, and I also have the Redskins. I think the Redskins are going to be a sleeper team this year. I think RG3 uh, is going to really uh, uh, show a lot. I, I think he's going to have a better year with the Redskins than Andrew Luck will have with the Colts. Not because I'm saying he's a better quarterback than Andrew Luck, but I think he's got a better supporting cast than Andrew Luck has at this stage. I think that the Redskins uh, were kind of competitive last year, and you infuse that, uh, uh, that quarterback with, with the ability that he has. And I just think they're going to be a sleeper team. I think that they're going to win some games. They're going to squeak into the playoffs. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I have the Packers getting in. So, so those are my two wild card teams. What are yours? My two wild card teams coming out of the uh, the NFC are going to be the um, Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions. I okay. think they're both coming out of the uh, the NFC. 
All right, uh, so north. So, so you and I basically have the, the, the all the same teams going to the playoffs, except I got the Redskins and you got the Lions. With all mm-hmm. of that said, when the smoke clears, who's going to become the NFC champ for this year? I think it's going to be the Packers. See, now I, I picked the 49ers. So Brooklyn Mike's got the Packers going to the Super Bowl. I got the 49ers getting well, in the Super Bowl. Let me so, say this. If, 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 if the... NFC, I, I believe the NFC championship will come out of whoever has whoever has the home game. I, I, I think. Yeah, listen, I don't want to hear that. Home. I don't want to hear that. I just want you to pick <laughs> one team. You're picking the Packers. I, I, I respect that. All right. So I'm, as, I'm, as much as I like, you know, and I really did think the 49ers were going to do it, but Alex Smith scares me. So even with that defense, he scares me. And as, as much improved as I think the Atlanta Falcons going to be, and I think Matt Ryan's going to have a top five quarterback year, I still got to go with the Packers because I, I think the road to Super Bowl is going to go through Lambeau Field. Okay, and I well, don't think they're going to make the same mistake they did last year uh, with the Giants. They better not. But uh, I, I, I got the 49ers. I think Alex Smith is, a, is an underrated quarterback. He's been he – was, remember, he was a number one draft pick. He's went through, I think, three coaches since he's been with that team. Um, I, I think this is going to be a good year for him. Uh, I'm picking the 49ers to go to the Super Bowl. All right, let's 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 run through the AFC. We just broke it all down, so let's go through this quick so we can get some Jet and Giant talk in. Um, AFC West, who's going to win it in your opinion? Uh, AFC West. Mm. This is going to be tough, but I'm going to have to go with uh... – I'm going to have to go with Denver, even though San Diego is always playing, uh, you know, they're always tough. They're always in the, you know, at the hunt. Uh, I I think Denver with Peyton Manning, just it's just too much of a difference. And I see them winning the uh, AFC West. I agree with you. I picked Denver as well in the AFC North. Who are you taking in the North? Baltimore. I I think the improved offense is going to help that defense. And, um, I think Baltimore is going to uh, edge out the uh, Steelers. I agree. I picked the Ravens as well. AFC South, who's going to win that? No doubt about that. The uh, Texans are going to win the South. And I picked the Houston Texans as well. So far, we're in agreement. Are we going to make it four out of four? Who's going to win the AFC East? Uh, You know who's winning AFC East. And I agree with you. (laughs) the the killer bees. I hate them, but yes, they're going to win. I picked two teams in the wild card. I'm picking the Steelers and another sleeper team. I I, I have two sleeper teams in my wild cards. I got in uh, in the uh, AFC. I got Pittsburgh getting into the wild card. And my sleeper team, Cleveland Browns. I I love Trent Richardson. I think that team is going to go further than we think. Who's your wild card teams? My my, uh, two wild card teams are the Steelers. And you ready? The Buffalo Bills, I think they're going to sneak in. Okay, you know, I, I, I tell you, I was torn. I was torn between Buffalo and, and Cleveland. I just think that Buffalo, because of the rivalry with the Jets uh, in, in the East, I think that they're going to be beaten up. Uh, they got a rivalry with New England. They, uh, they got a rivalry with every team in the East. The Dolphins, because of that, I think they're going to beat each other up. And when it comes playoff time, injuries are going to prevent the Buffalo Bills from getting in there. I think the Browns, although they play tough, their style of football, and I think they're just a bigger team, they're going to get in. That's my opinion. Who's going to win the AFC division? Who's going to be in the Super Bowl representing the AFC? Houston Texans. Oh, wow. Big one. Big one there. I'm picking the Denver Broncos with Peyton Manning. Uh, so really? my, my My lineup is uh, Denver against the 49ers for the Super Bowl. You got uh, the Houston uh, Texans uh, playing <clears throat> against uh, the Green Bay Packers in your Super Bowl. Yes, I do. Who's going to win? Because it's going to be in a neutral site, and you know, if everybody stays healthy, I think it's going to be uh, Houston Texans. Wow, big, big underdog, Houston Texans uh, winning it all for uh, for this year, according to Brooklyn Mike. Uh, I I got Denver and the Forty Nine ers going to the Super Bowl. Uh, I think it's going to be an exciting game, uh, and uh, I I I I honestly think, and and I hate to say this. Uh, but uh, I, I think Peyton Manning is going to have a fantastic year, fantastic game, but it's the year of the San Francisco 49ers. I'm picking the San Francisco 49ers to go all the way and uh, win the Super Bowl this year. So uh, that's our picks. Uh, we broke down the uh, NFC uh, division last week. We broke down the AFC division this week. Now let's go on to uh, a little Jet and Giant talk. Uh, first and foremost, the Jets. Listen, the offenses look terrible. You know, you mentioned that they haven't won a preseason game. Neither has Buffalo. I got news for you. The whole division has won one game combined, and that was New England. 
Um, I, you know, I, I think preseason is a waste of time. I think it's become a total waste of time. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, we used to watch preseason to see which guys were going to make the team. I think the league has changed. I think everybody knows who's going to make the team before preseason. There may be five players on the bubble that uh, earn a position uh, on preseason. I think what preseason really does today is look at those other positions, those those season-ending injury reserve. Let me save you for next year, guys, that they always seem to, to hold on to and not let play. There's a, there's a way that they play around. I personally think that uh, uh, we're not gaining anything by saving players uh, throughout the preseason, and they don't get a full taste of a, of a real full uh, you know, 60-minute football game until week number one. And uh, therefore, as a result of that, I think it takes two or three games uh, before these teams are, are, are flowing. And if they can get, you know, get by injury, uh, not get any injuries, I should say, uh, uh, you know, you're looking at the, uh, the first four games before you see in the, the real teams. What's your thoughts on the preseason? Could we do something to change uh, the way we look at preseason? There was talk about increasing uh, the, uh, the length of the season to eliminate preseason. The players didn't want it. What, what do you think? Well, I, I understand why the players don't want it. I mean, obviously, money, uh, you know, money, the money. injury factor. But, um, you know, pre, like you said, preseason doesn't determine what this, the team is going to do in, in the uh, in the regular season. That being said, then I have to ask you, why are we so upset that the Jets only scored one touchdown and they're 0-4 in preseason? So it's, I, I, I agree with you. It doesn't determine what's going to happen in the regular season. But still, there's a little something about preseason that you, you, you're still taking a look at these players and, and you're still taking a look at, at offensive schemes and defensive schemes. And you know, there's a little something that determines what they're going to look like. Not 100 percent, maybe not even 50 percent, but a little something. That's why. Otherwise, we wouldn't be so upset that this team's only scored one touchdown in uh, in the preseason. That's not um, me, though. That's not my opinion. I, I I am not basing any of my dismal, uh, uh, what I'm assuming is going to be a dismal season for the New York Jets based on their preseason performance. I, I'm basing it on everything we've talked about um, for the last several weeks. Number one, you know, they're bragging about their defense. I don't see it. I see a lot of problems with that defense. I see a defense that can only get to the quarterback when they're blitzing, which leaves the rest of the field open. That puts a lot of pressure on their uh, pressure on their corners. Uh, yes, they, when they're all playing well, they they have at least one shutdown corner, uh, but he's not going to play up to up to speed because of his attitude. Camarde, he wants to be a receiver. I think he's overrated as a as a cornerback. I don't know how solid that corner. Uh, position is uh, even though we we do have a uh, on paper uh, you know the best secondary in the league our linebackers are are very questionable I like some of the young linebackers but we don't have the front four that we need if we needed a front four that was a, a shutdown New York Giants style front four defense I'd have a lot more confidence in in the D as far as the offense listen you and I have talked about this and beat it to death there's no reason that Tim Tebow should be listed as a quarterback. You know, it, 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 the one thing I will say about preseason is they show that uh, McElroy is, is the best passer we have on that team. You know, I mean, I, I like Sanchez. I'm not ready to throw in the towel on, on Mark Sanchez yet. But, but McElroy is, is definitely uh, a, a very good quarterback, and I'm afraid we're going to lose this guy uh, at some point. And Tim Tebow should be listed as a running back. I, at least it does not de- it does not deter from the Wildcat and what he could do that he could throw from it. It does not deter from him going for alpha passes and being on special teams coverage and all of that stuff. All the things that they say he's going to do, he could do with a position labeled running back. You know, there's no reason for him to be a quarterback except for one, and that's because he wants to be a quarterback. And I think that that's part of the deal. Other than that, to me. He's not an NFL quality quarterback. No, there's no doubt about that, and I agree with you. But I mean, instead of labeling him running back, which he's not a running back, uh, you know, I I think they should make Greg McElroy um, the backup and Tim Tebow third string. And the reason I say that because let's say Mark Sanchez does goes down, Greg McElroy is going to run the the same offense that Mark Sanchez is running. If Tim Tebow is the backup quarterback. Now you have to change the whole offense 
to accommodate Tim Tebow. I, I agree. But let me ask you. Him? Let me ask you a question though. And 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 I know we talked about this the other day on the phone. But the the the, the third string quarterback rule is 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 kind of a weird rule in the NFL. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you go to your third string, if your first string quarterback goes down and your second string quarterback is there and you choose to put the third string quarterback in, not because the second string quarterback was injured, but because you chose to put the third string in, I believe you can't go back to the previous string quarterback. I think you got to finish the game with that third string quarterback unless they're carrying them off the field. How does that work with a wildcat? Well, if that if that is true, I'm I'm not quite sure myself. But if that is true, then 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 Tebow is just going to be in there with the wildcat. And then you, I mean, how, if Tebow's in there, let's say Sanchez gets hurt and then Tebow's in, and what if Tebow gets hurt? Then you're going to bring in McElroy. Right now, okay. your wildcat's off off the table, right? Right, right. Now exactly. now, what what happens if Sanchez gets hurt? Right. And you go to your second string quarterback, which is Tim Tebow, and he can't throw. He, like you said moments ago, he can't hit the side of a barn with his pass. And now the game's on the line, and you're playing to win the game. I mean, I, I hope that that nutcase that we got as an offensive coordinator realizes that we're supposed to score points. And that's how you win games, and 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 makes a decision that you know what I, I don't have the right guy in here, a quarterback, but I got the guy holding the clipboard right now. Sanchez can't return today. Tim Tebow can't connect with a pass. I'm making a move here. I'm putting I'm putting Craig McElroy, McElroy in there. Um, now what happens? What happens with Tim Tebow? Is he allowed to run the Wildcat? Is he allowed on the field? I, I'm not sure of that rule. I'm not quite sure of the rule, but I will say this: it, it's not it's not going to be up to Tony Sperano. It, it, it all boils down to to Rex Ryan making no, the decision. No, that's and not true because Rex Ryan has said time and time again he has nothing to do with the offensive calls unless no, he's changing the, his call, mind. Calling the offense is one thing, but he has the ultimate decision who's going to be named the second-string quarterback. Well, I mean, uh, this is true on on paper, right. but he's going to be listening to, to, to Tony Soprano, you know, and, and – I just I'm so scared of this whole Tim Tebow thing. Not I I do think that he could run the Wildcat well. I, I not that I think the Wildcat is is NFL caliber, but um, I I do think it, it's a wrinkle. But I think they could accomplish that without him being labeled a quarterback. End of story. Whether it's a running back, a receiver, a tight end, a, a, you know, a lineman. I don't care what they name him, but it should be any position other than what they'd have him labeled. It's just it's terrible. And 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 you know. They released 15 guys or something yesterday. Um, I'm looking at some of the names on the list, and they're receivers and offensive linemen. And, and I'm saying to myself, this is what they need the most of. Why wouldn't they keep extra depth at those two spots? Uh, I, I, again, uh, I'm with you. I shake my head uh, when I see that. Um, plus the guys that were cut from other teams that, you know, like I said the other day, uh, Jabbar Gaffney. Why are we not bringing him to t in the camp? I couldn't believe that he, that he was cut. And when you said that, I, I'm shocked that they didn't sign him, especially with his father doing so well with the Jets. How about how about um, uh, Sean Merriman from from Buffalo, who was cut? Uh, uh, you know, at, at one time he's a, a fantastic pass rusher. Why didn't the Jets bring him in to look at him? They, yeah, I, I, I probably think because of the issues he's had with the uh, the off the field issues with uh, his girlfriend and and the steroid and the and the, the, the Steroid issue. I, Come on, I think the Jets they just wanted to. Yeah, but look at that. all. Look at the rest of the Jets locker room, man. Come on, they're, they're well, obviously. Uh, no, I understand, but uh, there's no reason to. I think at the point they've reached their limit as far as uh, circus acts. Yeah, well, so, they, they got. You know, they, that's, they, they got plenty. I, I don't think, and I think that, that position, the linebacker position, um, I think they're pretty stout there. Uh, I, I mean, I like David Harris. I love David I think, Harris. Yeah, I love him. Calvin Pace has always been capable. He's uh, he's fifty uh, fifty. He he hasn't. He's been uh, capable. You said the right word. He's been capable. Capable. But he, he hasn't performed really consistently. Consistency has been his problem, Mike. And I also want to see what Aaron Maven does with a, a full year with the Jets. You know, that's another. Yeah, he surprised us last year. He, you, you know, know we, what? We traded one headache for another, and he was very very good for us. He he got cut. He was in another Buffalo Bill, if if right. I recall correctly. Uh, he did play well for us. They're putting a lot of stock in him this year. 
Um, you know, I, you know, they, they also rely on Calvin Pace, who got old all of a sudden. I'm, I'm really concerned with the offensive line. I'm, res, I'm concerned with a lack of running game. There's no running game. We've got one running back. If Sean, God forbid Sean Green goes down. Who, who do we got? We got the Smurf. We got the we got that Smurf that 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 fumbles the ball. Yes, he worked. He was with Sanchez in uh, uh, in uh, in college, but he's too small for a running back in the NFL. Uh, yeah, he's got some great moves. He's not going to last. The guy's not going to last. Plus, he's a fumbler. Uh, we do have uh, another rookie that's not bad, but no 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 standout running back, man. I, I'm I'm really concerned with that. But forget the running back. We don't have a line. We don't have a line. Now, now we picked up, you and I talked about this the other day, and, and I'm trying to rush through the Jets because I, I want to give the Giants uh, uh, and the Cowboys a preview some, some time here. So let's just talk one more thing. Um, you got uh, a swap. You know, uh, up until uh, late last uh, this week, um, everybody uh, from the Jets was saying, Hunter's staying, Hunter's staying, Hunter's staying. Then all of a sudden we read Hunter's gone. And instead they, they swapped them. Uh, we got Jason Smith uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, Hunter. And Jason Smith was the same problem that we were having with Hunter. Jason Smith uh, was having, and and now we took him on, which I, you know I don't have a problem with that. But but here's my question: the guy's due to make fourteen million dollars next year. What are the Jets signing this guy for, except as a backup uh, insurance policy? Or what if he thrives with the Jets? Are are, are they going to shell out fourteen million for this guy? No, number number one, I doubt he's going to thrive. Number two, there's no way the Jets are going to shell out 14 million next year. That what they needed, they needed to replace the problem that they had now, which was um, Hunter, and uh, that's what they did. They traded one bad guy for another, and like, look, look we yeah, did. Yeah, but it. Wayne Hunter was Maybe a starter. Came in, Wayne Maybe Hunter came in and he did a good job for us. So Maybe Smith, uh, Jason Smith, does a good. And that's job. my point. It's just for the season. No, but let's say let's say he does a good job. If if he starts doing a good job, and let's face it, man. The, the the Jets' offensive line is so bad that that a guy like uh, Jason Smith can come in and and in a couple of weeks. I mean, we can't expect him to to come in, uh, you know, this upcoming uh, you know f- first game of the season for the Jets because the guy doesn't even know the offense yet. He's just been with the team a week, you know. So so I I mean, I'm not expecting him to do that. But let's say five six games into the season, he's got a good hold on the on the offensive line uh, on the playbook. He's doing okay. He replaces the guy who. Uh, uh, you know, is is starting over Wayne Hunter, who we got rid of for, and he plays a solid game, a solid season. I think the only way the Jets could retain him, if they even had an interest, let's say he does play well, is to try and sign him this year and and throw away that fourteen million dollar contract because I don't think anybody else is going to be interested in this guy, especially if he's on the roster on the depth chart as as a backup lineman right now for the New York Jets. No, there's, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And uh, but it, that, I, I can tell you, you know, right, right now, that's not on their radar to to re-sign this guy. No, but the offensive you know, line should be on their radar. That's what you know. I, I it just, is. I'm it so... is. Now, that's why they addressed the problem. But they're not even looking about it, 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 re-signing and, and, and adjusting his con- his contract. What if he does good? Well, let's see how he does first. No, you're right. You're right. You're let's right. See how he does. First. I'm thinking too far ahead, but I'm just so concerned with this line. And and everybody, including yourself, are, are so quick to blame Sanchez. You know, and, and and you know, we took all his weapons away. We took away his two favorite receivers. We took away a, a line that was solid. You know, I still am scratching my head why they got rid of Fana, uh, 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 Fanica. Fanica. Yeah, yeah, that was a, right. that was a total stupid, stupid move. You know, and and now you know we we bring in Tim Tebow. You know, let, let's put some more pressure on this guy. You know, oh, and, oh, by the way, we extended his contract too. I mean, it's just it's just ludicrous stuff. Hey, we're running out of time. Uh, the NFL season kicks off Wednesday night. The New York Giants, Super Bowl champs. God, that tastes so terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, playing against the Dallas Cowboys. Preseason means nothing to me, but the Giants went 2-2. Two and two, Cowboys went 3-1. and one. Um, As usual, uh, Jerry Jones made some uh, uh, pretty uh, outrageous comments about the Cowboys and the Giants. Uh, it's for real on Wednesday night to kick off the season. How do you see the season going? Are the Giants going to be picking up where they left off on that Thanks to the Jets' tear, they haven't lost since that game. Uh, they were a team that looked like they were, you know, not going to get into the playoffs. Instead, they haven't lost since. They are pretty much the same team that won the Super Bowl. They're healthy. Uh, they do have a couple little injuries, but they're healthy. They got Eli Manning, who seems to finally have, uh, you know, become the leader of this team. They got some good, solid receivers. Their defense is strong. The Cowboys, they're loaded with talent. They were loaded with talent last year. A lot of people still picking them to be a, a major player. How's this first game going to go? 
Uh, you know, the Giants own the Cowboys for the last three years, and they've they've never lost in the new Cowboy Stadium, and I see that trend uh, continuing. Um, that 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 front four is just ridiculous. You know, uh, you would trade any one of our guys on, on our line for just one of theirs. Um, the the problem with the Giants is, is you know they're secondary. Um, Terrell Thomas gone, Prince of Mukamura, uh injured. Uh, they, they're going to have some problems in their secondary. But that being said, because of the pressure that, that the front seven put on the um, on the quarterback, um, they'll they'll do all right. And, and the fact that you know Austin Miles is hurt and, and Jason Witten is not there, Romo is going to have to uh, you know really step it up. And I, I just don't think that Romo is, is is as good as people keep saying he is year after year after year. And, and given this team, you know, uh, you know, picking this team because they, how they look on paper as, a, as um, is different than how they perform. Um, I, I think the, the Giants, don't forget, after they won their first Super Bowl against New England, they, they started the season 11 and one. And, and you're talking about injuries. Yeah, they have a few, you know, nicks here and there, but not like last year when they were missing major, major players from the beginning. And they got healthy towards the end of the season. That's why they made that that magical run. Well. If they're that healthy now, then they're going to be a damn good team and and very hard to beat. I, I you know, Cowboys made some pickups with uh, on the defense, um, picking up Claiborne as the number one pick and and Brandon Carr. So they're trying to improve their secondary. I still see um, with an improved Giant running game because they finished last last year. I think they're going to be better with the rookie uh, David Wilson. And I, I see the Giants controlling this game and, and beating Dallas again in Cowboy Stadium. I'm going against you, man. I'm picking the uh, Cowboys beating the Giants. I, I do think the Giants are a solid team. Uh, but, uh, but I think that whole preseason discussion that I talked about uh, earlier, and, and, and it was indicative of last year's season with the Giants, they're a calm team. They're, they're, they've taken on that personality of Eli Manning, in my opinion, um, they're in no rush. I think they follow the Bill Parcells rule of dividing the season into into parts. And, uh, you know, if they can get out of uh, that first part, those first four games, um, I, I, I think if they can get out of that with a 500 record, the Giants will be very happy. Um, I, I think the Giants are going to lose. I, I think that the Cowboys – now I'm not saying – I picked the Giants to win the division, but I think the, the season opener, which is on a Wednesday night, which is very unusual for the NFL – um, I, I'm picking the Cowboys. I'm picking the Cowboys to win that one. You know, interesting thing, before we wrap it up here, I, I got some other stuff, but interesting thing, you talk about the Giants' front four and how we would love to have it. Uh, I heard an interview the other day with uh, Lawrence Taylor, and, uh, you know, they asked him, they were asking him some questions about, the, you know, the, 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 the way the game is played today and everything else. And I, first of all, I find it strange. They're talking about him like he played 100 years ago. I'm still thinking he's on the team, you know. Um, and, right. uh he said, and he made it clear, now considering how great he did, how great he was, he said that if he played, if he played right now with the line, the front four that the Giants have, he said he probably would have had twice as many sacks as he has right now. Amazing, yep. considering the line that he did play with, you know, so uh, uh, amazing stuff there. But uh, uh, Brooklyn Mike picking the Giants to uh, kick off the NFL season with a win. I'm picking the Cowboys. Uh, but uh, uh, right now, uh, we're going to go to our uh, trivia. Now, this trivia question, I'm getting sick of it myself. I'm, I'm, ready, I'm, re I'm ready to uh, uh, throw it in. So anybody that's listening, uh, whether you're uh, listening live, whether you're listening on WMML uh, on Sunday, or whether you're uh, watching a, the replay of the show, you know, if you know the answer, email me. Um, uh, what is the email address? Uh, uh, New York Sports, NY Sports at BillyCBoxing.com. That's NY Sports at BillyCBoxing.com. Make sure you answer this because uh, we want to give this away. What's on the line is a uh, Lin Swan, maybe it's the prize, a Lin Swan rookie card. Uh, and uh, it goes to the first person that gets this correct. Uh, the first New York football team to win the Super Bowl was the New York Jets. They beat the Colts 16-7 uh, in 1969 in Super Bowl three. Who were the head coaches for these two teams? If you can name the two head coaches, you'll win the prize. Email me the correct answer at nysports at billycboxing.com. 
dot com. I know you know this one, Brooklyn Mike. So you're of not course. you're you're not eligible uh, for this. But uh, it's it surprises me nobody's uh, uh, gotten it right yet. But uh, anyway, this day in New York sports history, we got some New York sports history stuff going on right now. On this day, September first. In 1951, Don Mueller hits three home runs and five ribbies to lift the Giants over the Dodgers 5-1 to one at the Polo Grounds on this day in 1951. On this day, uh, September 1st in 1976, the opening night at the new Meadowlands racetrack had almost 43,000 people show up for eight, 11 races. Uh, uh, so that's what took place on this day in 1976. And on this day in 1980, uh, Arthur Donovan, who was uh, a... Uh, uh, a uh, boxing referee who uh, uh, refereed over 150 world title bouts, uh, whose father was a, a former uh, famous uh, a world champion a boxer in the bare knuckle days, and whose son played for the Baltimore Colts, Art Donovan Jr. Uh, he passed away at 89 years old in the Bronx on this day in 1980. Brooklyn Mike, that concludes our show for today. You got any final thoughts? I'm just excited about the uh, the season. I can't. It's finally here, the NFL season. I mean, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I will say one thing. I don't know if it happened to you, but did you ever get to the point where you're so upset at your team you want to see them fail just to hear what they have to say? I'm getting to that point with the Jets. I hope they do well because I am a Jet fan. But I'm getting to that point. Well, I felt the same way about the Jets. Uh, I felt the same way about the Mets at the beginning of the season. Uh, as I feel about the Jets right now, it's the first time in 40-something years that uh, I, I think that the Jets are just going to totally lay an egg. As far as the Giants are concerned, I think they're going to be there at the end. I'm Billy C. I'm joined with Brooklyn Mike. Until next time, ciao, baby.